inquiry in aid of legislation of the Committee on Banks, Financial Institutions, and Currencies, joined with the Committee on Government, Corporations and Public Enterprises, Committee on Ways and Means, and Committee on Finance, is hereby called to order. At this point, let me acknowledge the presence, the presence of the following committee members, uh, Senator Binay, Senator Gachagran, and Senator Tiveros. May I ask the committee secretary to acknowledge our guests and resource persons attending today. Good morning, Mr. Chair, and good, mo good morning to our resource persons and guests. We would like to acknowledge the presence of the following resource persons. From the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, Ms. Illuminada Sikat, physically present, Senior Assistant Governor, Monetary and Economic Sector. Attorney Leila Magda Rivera, Managing Director of the BSP, physically present. Attorney Asma Panda, Deputy General Counsel of the BSP, physically present. From the Department of Finance, Yusek Zino Abenoha, Office of the Chief Economist, physically present, and ASEC Yofrosino Bernabe Jr., Office of the Chief Economist, physically present. From the National Economic and Development Authority, Yusek Rosemary G. Edelion, Undersecretary for Policy and Planning Group, physically present, together with Director Hazel Iris S. Baliatan, Public Investment Staff, physically present. From the Bureau of Treasury, our National Treasurer, Ms. Rosalia V. De Leon, physically present. And her Deputy Treasurer, Mr. Eduardo Antonio Anthony, Edu Mr. Eduardo Anthony Marino, physically present. From the Department of Budget and Management, BBM, we have Yusek Leo Angelo M. Larica, physically present. Yusek Joselito Basilio, physically present. Director Andrea Celine Magtalas, physically present. Deputy Executive Director Maria Dionesia Guillermo, physically present. From the Land Bank of the Philippines, the President and Chief Executive Officer, Ms. Cecilia C. Baromeo, physically present, together with Attorney Roderick E. Sacro, First Vice President, physically present, Ms. Sandra May C. Dalaman, Vice President, physically present, Ms. Maria Melissa L. Bernardo, Assistant Vice President, physically present. From the Governance Commission for Government-Owned or Controlled Corporation, GCG, we have Justice Alex L. Quiroz, virtually present. From, uh, from the GCG as well, Commissioner Gideon Martel, virtually present. Director Michael Pabalinas, virtually present. From the Office of the Government Corporate Council, OGCC, Attorney Rogelio Quevedo, physically present, together with Ms. Melissa Montesilio Acorda, Assistant Government Corporate Council, physically present. From the Securities and Exchange Commission, Commissioner MacGill Brian T. Fernandez, physically present, together with Attorney Romwald C. Padilla, General Counsel, physically present. From the Philippine Abusement and Gaming Corporation, TAGCOR, Attorney Arnold Ferdinand Salvosa, Assistant Vice President, Corporate Services Department, physically present. Ms. Maria Sheryl D. Uh, Ms. Maria Sheryl De Guia, Senior Manager, Accounting Department, physically present. Mr. Ramon Stephen Villaflor, Vice President, Corporate Social Responsibility Group, physically present. Uh, and from the Public Private Partnership Center, we have Deputy Executive Director Jeff I. Manalo, physically present. From the National Development Company, we have General Manager Mr. Antonio D.C. Mauricio, physically present, together with Assistant General Manager Saturnino H. Mejia, physically present, and Assistant General Manager Roel Z. Mabaza, physically present. From the DTI, we have Undersecretary Irineo V. Vismonte, physically pre present. From the Development, Development Bank of the Philippines, we, we have Ms. Veronica Renasho and C, uh, the Senior Assistant Vice President, 
of the DBP physically present. From the private sector, we have Ms. Ramo, Mr. Ramon S. Monzon, President and Chief Executive Officer of the Philippine Stock Exchange, virtually present. And his General Counsel, Attorney Veronica G. Del Rosario, virtually present. From the Bankers Association of the Philippines, we have Mr. Antonio Simon Cupa Jr., virtually present, together with his director, uh, Associate Director Arnel N. Almaden, virtually present. That's all your honor. Thank you. Please allow us to state specific house rules to ensure the orderly and efficient conduct of the hearing. The committee secretary shall inform today's attendees of our house rules. To all our resource persons and guests, kindly mute your microphone if you are not recognized or do not wish to be recognized. Since the visuals of the online meeting are limited, please inform the chairperson of your inquiry by first stating your name, position, organization, instrumentality, before stating your concern, comment, or position. All data that the resource persons who wish to present relative to the subject today may be submitted to the, to the committee secretariat for the consideration of this body. Only one representative per office or organization will be allowed to speak for their respective organizations. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, and thank you for. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the presence of uh, Senator JV Ericito. So, thank you again to everyone for attending this committee hearing and assisting us in understanding the topics to be discussed this morning. So, good morning, and this is our third hearing concerning the Maharlika Investment Fund Bill, uh, House uh, House Bill Number Six Six Zero Eight, an Act establishing the Maharlika. Investment fund providing for the management, investment, and use of the proceeds of the fund and appropriating funds thereof by uh, representatives uh, Romualdez, Dalipe, Kimbo, et al. Uh, Senate Bill Number 1670, an act establishing the Maharlika Investment Fund providing for the management, investment, and use of the proceeds of the fund and for other purposes by Senator Mark, by Senator Mark Villar. And Senate Bill Number 1814, an act establishing the Maharlika Investment Fund, providing for the management, investment, and use of the proceeds of the fund, and for other purposes, by Senator Rafi Tulfo. In the last hearing, we heard the joint position of the Federation for Economic Freedom and the Management Association of the Philippines, which was presented by Mr. Calixto Chicampo. In summary, he raises reservations of the bills under consideration. According to him, the funding source for Maharlika uh, is a Concern. He suggested that the funding for Maharlika should not come from any government financial institution or the central bank because it will put, uh, it may possibly put the banking system at some risk. He creates concerns on the confusion of objectives, uh, and all four objectives identified in the bills may not be readily achieved. He added that the objectives of the fund must be in such a way that it will not compete with the private sector. If so, there is no level playing field with, between the Maharlika Investment Corporation and the private sector. On the other hand, the Land Bank responded that investment that investment of 50 billion pesos in the Maharlika Fund will not affect the corporation much as it will be taken from its 1.5 trillion investable funds. The BSP uh, opined that the dividend contribution to the Maharlika Investment Fund may delay the raising of the capital of BSP but will not affect the mandate of the BSP in promoting price stability and a strong financial system as the balance sheets of the BSP are strong enough capacitated to perform its mandate. Uh, we know, however, that the relatively big investable funds of land bank are due to the low absorptive capacity of the agricultural sector. The solution is to increasing to increasing the absorptive capacity of the agricultural sector is limited by the financial constraints of government, which could be partly addressed by a well-functioning and flexible Mohalik Investment Corporation, which although with a relatively small fund, can nevertheless encourage investments with the private sector on key sectors, including agriculture and infrastructure. Last hearing, the possible involvement of the National Development Company was mentioned. By our colleagues with the needed answers, we invited the National Development Company to this hearing. We also invited the Bureau of Internal Revenue on, manage, on matters relating to tax, as well as the SEC on securities regulation issues. I would like to thank my colleagues, the resource speakers, and the public for contributing in enriching our discussions on the bills 
their consideration. Now we'll continue with our discussions about the bills. I may ask the Senators present this hearing if they have any opening statement prior to our discussion. And uh, you have, if you, if you have, if you decide to uh, have an opening statement, you have five minutes. Senator Thank you, uh, Senators. And now we proceed with the discussion. During the last hearing, the National Development Corporation, uh, sorry, the National Development Company was mentioned earlier, right after Senator Provo Pimentel requested that the NDC be invited to attend the next committee hearing. Now let us hear from the NDC representatives about the NDC's, NDC's stance and comments on the Mahalika Investment Fund. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Yes. So for the for the presentation of um, NDC, can I just inquire from Tagor if they already submitted what we asked for during the briefing? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, you're happy uh, to answer. Yes, we submitted a position paper. Uh, however, we will discuss the details of the amounts in our presentation. Actually, Mr. Chairman, during the briefing, I said we asked for. Yung, ano ba, yung mga payables nyo? Yes, Mr. Chair. Nandun na po sa position paper namin. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, you may now proceed, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chair. The Chairman of the National Development Company is uh, DPI Secretary Fred Pascual, and he has prepared a statement uh, to be read by Undersecretary uh, Barry Vismonte, if you will allow, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning to the members of this uh, committee. The statement of, uh, of support of the Department of Trade and Industry for the establishment of the Maharlika Investment Fund. The Department of Trade and Industry supports the creation of the proposed Maharlika Investment Fund. The MIF, the MIF is envisioned as a vehicle for mobilizing investment resources to propel economic growth and help achieve the nation's economic goals. Given that the sovereign wealth fund has been established in almost 100 countries and used by governments in both first world and developing countries to achieve their economic objectives, the MIF is a welcome proposal for the Philippines as it will undoubtedly increase investments in the country. While its declared objective is to help fund big ticket infrastructure projects, its creation also has the potential to bring in investments the three key export sectors of manufacturing and transport, technology and communications, and health and life and sciences. Investment in these sectors will promote industrialization, improve productivity, and create more stable and higher paying jobs. The, M the MIF is also expected to support high return green and new projects in agriculture that can accelerate industrial development. We acknowledge the potential intergenerational benefits from the MIF, including increased access to future generations to income from investments, such as potential earnings from extracted natural resources, as in mining. We also know that the MIF will assert the Santiago principles and adopt safeguards to ensure operational integrity. Therefore, the DDI supports the establishment of the MIF as a vehicle that will help us achieve the goals of our country for better trade, more investments, economic growth, and ultimately prosperity for all. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and to the members of this committee. Thank you. And, if, and at this point, I'd like to ask the CE to make uh, your statement regarding your position on the Maharlika. Mr. Chair, just yeah. a clarificatory question. Please, please proceed. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Just to clarify, the statement read by Yusek Bismonte is the statement from the National Development Company. Do I did I understand that correctly, Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair, uh, the uh, statement is a is a statement of support of the Department of Trade and Industry. I apologize, Mr. Chair. I thought that uh, it was uh, uh, for the NDC. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Does the NDC have something to say? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, the uh, Secretary of uh, DTI is also the Chairman of the National Development Company. 
So, so basically, this is the statement of the National Development Company because he's the chair. Is that uh, is that correct? Uh, well, for, for that particular commissioner. statement, uh, he is uh, talking on behalf of the DTI. So uh, we have our own uh, we have our own uh, notes that we can uh, state uh, should we be asked to. Mr. Chairman, uh, maybe before we proceed to PSE, can we just get a brief background on NDC? Would you like to uh, give us a brief, uh, give the committee a brief background before we proceed with our other opening statements? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we we have sent. Uh, ho hopefully, it is in your mat materials, Mr. Chair. A presentation on NDC, which is uh, a bit long, but I will just get to the short long piece. Just just give us a general. I just get uh, to, the about NDC. to the salient points. Uh, basically, okay. The NDC is the government's investment arm. It was established on March 10, 1919, making it the, go the oldest government investment company. And semi uh, corporation back then, it later became a state-owned company in 1936. It is mandated to pursue commercial, industrial, agricultural, or mining ventures to give necessary impetus to national economic development as per our current charter, the 1648. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, yes, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, that was a very succinct uh, presentation so far, but I'm sure during the hearing, um, several of us, well, I, I'm willing to wait uh, my turn, Mr. Chair, just to make of record that kaya po interesado rin ako sa NDC because nabanggit din siya and our, my, our colleague, Sen Nancy, is nodding her head as well. Unang-unang hearing pa lang, or even in the briefing of the government's economic team, um, also for reasons like questions like, bakit hindi na lang uh, i-update, i-enhance yung charter ng NDC para sila yung makapag-sulong uh, ng mga layunin ng uh, Maharlika. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator. And I think uh, Senator Javi is a clarificatory question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd just like to ask, no, uh, as mentioned earlier, your NDC is probably has been doing investments uh, in the 90s, 80s, no? which uh, the Maharlika Fund investment is intended to do right now. Just like to ask you, si General Manager and Antonio Mauricio, what I, from my, what I know, um, for NDC was very much um, in uh, investments, so in the industrial parks, especially in the boom, Mr. Chair, of uh, uh, during the 90s boom of real estate, uh, especially in the Calabar zone area. May mga projects po ang NDC then, mga first Cavite industrial estates, other industrial parks. Just like to know if uh, is NDC still active at this time, um, so projects that are intended to stimulate economic growth, uh, especially uh, like, like industrial parks and the like. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, uh, our presentation might, um, uh, might answer a lot of questions. Maybe in order to save time, I can ask the Secretariat to uh, show our presentation, and we can just run through the slides very briefly. Uh, that's. Uh, I think you should just answer the question. Okay, the senator. Yeah, find the uh, find maybe the part of the slide that that is relevant, and then. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, thank you. Um, maybe we can just forward to the uh, to the projects. Uh, go go ahead. Uh, we we can just these are just the. Uh, uh, okay, so right now. Um, yeah, this is just our history of companies and projects. Uh, hmm. So we can uh, just uh, proceed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, baka you can proceed in the current projects. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the, the, yeah, no. Just give us an idea of some of your ongoing projects. Yes, we'll send the next uh, slide uh, here. Okay, these are the ongoing uh, projects. Uh, so... We have a focus on the uh, uh, 
MSMEs via the Startup Venture Fund. And uh, we are the largest single shareholder of the World Trade Center uh, held by the Manila Exposition Center, Inc. Uh, next slide. Uh, San Carlos Bioenergy is our first uh, bioethanol plant with 42 million liters annual production capacity. We also have a small hydropower plant in Rizal, Nueva Ecija, uh, one megawatt mini hydro, which is a joint venture with PNOCRC. Uh, we have a Davao food terminal complex in Toril, Davao City. Uh, we also own the Philippine Mining Development Corporation, as well as the Philippine Pharma Procurement Inc. Uh, we also own the Leyte Industrial Development Estate, which is a 425 hectares uh, special economic zone. Uh, we have the Science Park of the Philippines, uh, one of the pioneers in the private industrial estate. And um, actually, NDC industrial estate stems from the first industrial estate in the country, which is the first Cavite industrial estate in Dasmariñas, Cavite. We're now expanding the original uh, FCIE to 19.2 uh, hectares, which I have actually uh, already there are already many interested locators uh, and uh, we have a multi-purpose gamma irradiation facility also in the Smarinas Cavite um, our projects for approval are a vaccine manufacturing facility which will be the first in the country we hope to invest in it uh, by March an integrated palm oil plantation and mill with refinery project the e-commerce platform project of the Philippines and uh, a bamboo agro-industrial economic zone in Aguilar Pangasinan and the Center for Artificial Intelligence Research are just uh, some of the projects. Ano pa pala? Modernization and internalization of the internationalization of the first health biotechnology company of the Philippines and the solar hybrid projects. So in some, our current projects have a value, the current ongoing projects have a value of 17.8 billion. Uh, and our prospective projects, actually the, the next slides are just the are just the projects I, I was able to talk to the companies in Tokyo during the last trip. And uh, uh, these are just some of the companies that I talked to who will be uh, investing in the Philippines and doing technology transfer. So that's some of the things that the uh, national government development company is doing uh, right now, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Thank you. You're a senator. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Um, I note that the National Development Company is kasi marami na tayong na, na tanong tungkol sa INA, Sovereign Wealth Fund ng, ng Indonesia. But on the other hand, yung ating NDC is actually like the Sovereign Development Fund of Singapore, yung GIC Limited. So even if in broad strokes, um, GM Mauricio, how has the NDC uh, performed so far? Mr. Chair, if I may answer, thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Our performance as an asset manager, we have currently 31.2 billion uh, of uh, N2022 20, asset value. Out of this, we actively manage uh, 17.5 billion, and uh, our business income for 2022 was only 303.43 million which is uh, which represents 1.73% return on active assets and i will explain uh, why the performance is uh, such later on uh, as a fund manager mr chair uh, next slide please next slide please um, our total funds uh, as of december 20 well the 21 because it's audited Right. No, sorry. This is December 2021. 20, yes, 3.1 billion. So we're still auditing the 2022 figures. But uh, the 2022 uh, net interest income is only at 77.93 million, which represents a 2.52 percent return of the investable cash. The available funds uh, as of February 22, 2023, is only uh, 3.09 billion. So as you can see, the scale of the NDC is so much smaller. And the other GFIs. Next slide, please. Uh, to address, uh, before we go to the challenges, bef uh, before we go to the next slide, um, the NDC is more like uh, Temasek rather than the Government Investment uh, Corporation of Singapore. However, um, we are currently conducting a study on the best practices of Temasek, which uh, allows it to perform very well versus uh, NDC. Uh, and uh, we are still uh, preparing a white paper on the matter. Uh, the next slide, please, presents the challenges. Number one, next slide, please. Number one, NDC does not receive appropriations from the national government. Uh, 
Number two, NDC as a GOCC is mandated by law to declare and remit to the national government at least 50% of its net earnings. Uh, in fact, uh, it's at least because uh, during the pandemic, uh, we uh, also donate, uh, we also uh, remitted to the national government an additional 500 million uh, to, uh, for the pandemic effort. And number three, it receives minimal dividends from its subsidiaries, who are also GOCCs, as they directly remit 50% of their net earnings to the national government. Number four, next slide, please. The government's governance structure prevents it from investing in higher earning financial products being offered by uh, private institutions. Next slide, please. Uh, I think it's the next slide. Uh, next slide, please. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, delayed. Uh, there's a delay. All right, I'll just read it. We'll, we'll just wait for it. Uh, the next slide in challenges to our governance structure prevents NDC from investing in higher earning financial products being offered by private institutions. Number five, NDC. Yeah, so I hope you can fix the okay. NDC under its charter is tasked to invest in development projects which may not always yield high returns. This number six, and last, despite being a government entity, it is subject to regular taxation and does not enjoy financial incentives. The good thing is that we're always awarded as a highest taxpayer in uh, the LGUs where we're present. Uh, so uh, the last would be, NDC currently is not receiving the same category of compensation as a GFI. We are a GFI by our charter, a non-bank GFI at that. However, uh, in our charter, we are supposed to be considered a government financial institution in the same category as other financial institutions, such as the Central Bank and the Development Bank of the Philippines. Uh, however, currently, we are not in the same category as regards to compensation. Uh, which means we cannot be hiring um, uh, experts in finance and investment uh, to take care of our fund management. Uh, that is the... Uh, if, I, if I may proceed, uh, Mr. Chair, just... Uh, the Senator, there's another question. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I will serve my follow-up questions to the presentation for my turn in the hearing. Pero isang tanong na lang po uh, in relation to NDC vis-a-vis, -vis, di pala GIC Limited, pero vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Temasek. Um, because we know that NDC was used to bail out bankrupt corporations which were close to uh, a previous administration during the martial law dictatorship. So, and in relation to interesting sinabi nyo, you're currently pala conducting a study on the best practices of Temasek and you'll be coming out with a white paper. So, what reforms were implemented by NDC after the uh, People Power Revolution of 1986? Yeah, in broad strokes again, if you if you could, GM. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, proceed. Mr. Chair, may I ask our uh, Assistant General Manager, Roel Mabatsa, to answer the question? Thank you. So you're recognized, sir. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the committee, if I may. Um, based on our records, uh, after, the, uh, after the People Power Revolution, as mentioned by the good senator, uh, we, have not been, we have not been doing the building out of uh, uh, private corporations. Uh, and uh, we just concentrated on investing on new, on new ventures as well as other projects of the government. Salamat po. Uh, I'll just follow up that later on in relation to possibilities of updating the charter of NDC uh, as a possible alternative uh, to the Maharlika. Salamat po, um, sir, and GM Mauricio. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And uh, this point, we'd like to hear from the uh, PSE, uh, uh, statement from the PSE. Thank you. Followed by the BAP. Thank you.
Uh, Mr. Manson, you are hereby recognized. I think I think he's on mute. Parang naka mute siya. I can see you, sir. Uh, maybe you can try speaking. Well, I think you're beginning with me, sir. Let's try speaking, sir. I think we can hear you. Sir, you can uh, you can speak, sir. Uh, we can see you. Maybe we might be able to hear you if you can test the mic. Oh, uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry, there were some technical difficulties. I couldn't hear the uh, I couldn't hear you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Philippine Stock Exchange had previously submitted a position paper to your committee last January 30, 2023. Uh, would you like me to read uh, the position paper again, Mr. Chairman? Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, you can. Yes, you can read read the paper. I just get, at least give the committee an idea of the position of the PSE. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Philippine Stock Exchange expresses its support for the passage of House Bill Number no. Six Six O Eight and Senate Bill. 1670 or the Maharlika Investment Fund Act. PSE fully adheres to and shares the economic manager's strategic vision of having a sovereign fund that will optimize the use of government resources by channeling government funds into high return generating investments, which can in turn provide additional funding source for the pursuit of the country's socioeconomic policy priorities, such as big ticket infrastructure projects, countryside development, and poverty reduction. As a market institution whose performance and activity are largely influenced by economic conditions, it is incumbent upon the exchange to join the country's economic managers in pushing for key economic and fiscal reforms aimed at increasing national wealth 
and accelerating the country's economic development. While the Philippines currently does not have surplus revenues, the establishment of the Maharlika Investment Fund is envisioned precisely to create additional funds and over time accumulate surplus wealth that can be recycled and reinvested in high yielding undertakings. Contrary to theories that sovereign funds will only work if the country has surplus wealth, empirical data show otherwise. There are 148 sovereign wealth funds all over the world, some of which were established by countries ranked by the United Nations as among the least developed economies, such as Angola, Djibouti, Ethiopia, and Mauritania. Not all of the sovereign funds obtained funding from surplus wealth. For instance, the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Rwanda, the Agasiro Development Fund, was, up until 2020, financed by voluntary contributions from the private sector and Rwandan citizens in addition to the seed capital provided by the government of Rwanda. Similarly, the fund's sovereign de Djibouti funding source was not from its natural resource revenues, but from the annual rent charged to various foreign military bases hosted by Djibouti, the National Society Security Fund, and contributions from the National Investment Holding Entity, Great Horn Investment Holding. Closer to home, the Indonesian Investment Authority, or INA, is also not like the traditional sovereign wealth funds that manage a country's surplus reserves. Instead, INA was capitalized with $6 billion of government funds and invited foreign partners to come in as co-investors in various assets. Like the sovereign funds of developed countries, the MIF has the potential to address major infrastructure gaps in the country and provide the government much needed funds to deliver basic services without incurring additional leverage. We believe that now is an opportune time to establish the fund if you want to see and reap the exponential benefits of making of major infrastructure improvements and jumpstart the country's economic transformation. However, we would like to raise a point for clarification, which we hope will be of valuable use to the Honorable Committee in refining the provisions of the bill in relation to the mandate of the MICs vis-a-vis -vis the proposed Section 35 of Senate Bill Number 1670. Section 35 of Senate Bill Number 1670 provides that at least 25% of the net profits of the MIC shall be directly distributed in the form of poverty and subsistence subsidies, subsidies to families falling below the poverty threshold. Further, the same section provides that the remainder of the net profits shall be remitted to the national government to be earmarked for social welfare programs and projects, excluding infrastructure projects. We note that the effect of the aforementioned section of the draft bill will be to fully remit the equivalent amount corresponding to the net profits for the year and not to reinvest the same into the fund for reinvestment in other long-term investment opportunities in order to attain the objectives of the MIC. This will defeat the objectives of growing the fund to a size sufficient to build intergenerational wealth and pursue its investment goals. The Honorable Committee might want to reconsider this section vis-a-vis -vis the avowed long-term objectives of the Maharlika Investment Fund. Given the benefits of the establishment 
of the MIF and subject to the above comments, we respectfully urge the Senate to prioritize the immediate passage of Senate Bill number 1670. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to submit this position paper and we trust you will find our comments useful. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much uh, for your statement. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if it's a clarificatory, okay, sure, sure. Yes, uh, Senator Bina is a... Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, you, you mentioned Hukasen, uh, parang, um, yung 50% that will be used by the national government for technically for Ayuda defeat the purpose. Para nabanggit yung kanina. Uh, and you mentioned na it needs to be reinvested for it to attain yung um, a certain size. Ano mo ba yung na-envision yun na size of the, of the fund? At the moment, uh, Honorable Senator, uh, we are looking from the you know point of view of the draft bill, which is really, uh, at this, I think, about 75 billion pesos, 50 from the land bank and 25 from the DBP. Uh, and uh, also, I know the, uh, the, rev uh, the dividends of the BSP for the next two years will also be allotted. So maybe per perhaps about 100 billion. Uh, that's the fund we, uh, we were envisioning as a startup fund, Honorable Senator. And are you sufficient now with 100 billion? No, we, we think as a start it should be okay. But we think, you know, to be able to really, uh, I guess, realize the potential of a sovereign wealth fund, the amount should be uh, uh, much bigger like the other sovereign wealth funds, even if. Uh, just our neighbors like Indonesia or uh, Malaysia. And, you know, so what would that amount be in actual figures? Uh, Indonesia, uh, Madam Senator, started their uh, INA at uh, 6 billion US dollars, or roughly about uh, 330 billion pesos. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So at this point, uh, the BAP is uh, currently uh, uh, unavailable. Uh, so hopefully later, maybe we can get a statement from them, or if not, they can submit their statement. So at this point, I'd like to start uh, our discussion. I just, uh, with the indulgence of the committee, I'd just like to ask a few questions, and then we'll uh, go in order of arrival with the other senators. Um, I, I would just like the question for the, uh, for the ND NDC. Uh, I, I just want to get a. Um, I just want to get a statement from NDC. I want to clarify what is your stand on the Maharlika Fund and the creation of the Maharlika Investment Corporation. You view it as competing or complementing. I, I just want to get a categorical statement. Uh, categorical statement on the view of the National Development Company from the General Manager. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We sent a. We sent a letter last week. Uh, indicating that the NDC does not have a position on the Maharlika Fund since we were not involved from uh, the start. However, uh, upon, upon examining our charter, we have uh, several points. Uh, if, if, if we can have uh, the slide, uh, we feel that we can just emphasize the need for NDC as an investment arm. Uh, number one, for ND, NDC may focus on investment gaps, including support to MSMEs. Uh, this is something that we think is uh, complementary to the Arlika Fund if, in, if it does push through. Number two, we can be a primary vehicle for equity financing for smaller projects for the government, uh, as opposed to Arlika's uh, big tickets. Uh, number three, NDC Startup Venture Fund with the DTI will continue to support the innovation and startup development system. Number four, solid we our solid history of remitting funds to the national government uh, will continue. Number five, NDC's processes are certified based on an international standard, ISO 9001. 2015, and ensuring quality services and business excellence 
in our investments. Uh, number six, next slide, please. Uh, NDC plays a key role in managing important assets such as the Batangas Land Company Inc., where the Chevron Refinery now depot is. First Cavite Industrial Estate, the first industrial estate in the country. Lide, uh, Gridier Real Estate Inc., which owns a very prime property in uh, Alabang Zapote Road. Uh, Mayan Realty Corporation, which is a joint venture with Shell Corporation. And uh, Pinaka is a a realty corporation. NDC is a vital link to the investment ecosystem by bridging larger funds like uh, Mahalika Investment Fund with more moderate sized projects. Uh, to put it simply, we see that there is a synergy and complement the NDC when the Mahalika Fund is established. Uh, that, is how, that is how we view the Mahalika Fund, Mr. Chair. Yeah. And you have a, it says that you put a key role in managing. So you do have a management, uh, uh, you have a management group within the NDC that, that actively manages all these assets that you have. Yes, sir. We are a very lean organization, but we do have a management group. If our subsidiaries are operating, then they are, uh, or affiliate are operating, then they have a full management team within that company. If it is no longer operating, or uh, about to close, then uh, it is just a token company, and uh, the management is on that DC level. Uh, so we do have management capability here. Yes, Matrix right. Investment with Management. And, yes, uh, right now, Mr. Chair, I am concurrently the president of the uh, leader management operation, uh, so I do attend to the day-to-day. So we do get a lot of requests for also uh, funding for MSMEs that sort of... Uh, yeah, sort of yes, project. but we work in tandem with the Department of Trade and Industry. So we see uh, the, the DTI handles a lot of the uh, uh, small businesses. They have a shepherding program within the DTI. When these, uh, when these businesses are maybe three, four years and uh, operating well as a going concern, uh, then the the NDC comes in with equity funding, and we have a shepherding program. So the, uh, uh, that is called the Startup Venture Fund. Uh, so you're, you're the next step after DDI. They, they yes. have them in the initial, the, the more infancy phase. And you have the capability also yes. to identify these uh, small and medium enterprises. Yes, we work in tandem, yes. sir, with the SB Corp, the Small Business Corporation, because they are a much larger organization. So we provide equity. SB Corp provides uh, uh, financing, debt financing. So it works out in the startup ecosystem to support uh, MSMEs. So Mahalo can actually be a source of funding for these MSMEs with you. Since you already have the existing uh, infrastructure in place. Yes, sir. We were hoping to once it is established uh, for our different projects. I see. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you for the clarification, uh, General Manager. At this Mr. point, uh, yeah, yes, uh, you have a clarificatory. Uh, sure, sure, yeah. yeah. Salamat, Mr. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Just a brief observation to the uh, latest inputs from NDC. So, uh, it would still seem that for the longer part of its history, it was like Singapore's GIC or originally. Uh, it was also the inheritor of colonial government assets. 1919 po talaga, Mr. Chair. So maybe as punishment for some of its past deeds or misdeeds, it was cut down to size. Its powers and staffing uh, may have been put in the freezer. So thus it's like a micro temasek today. Um, and it's a, a steward or manager of arguably less important assets of the government. But still, Mr. Chair, very, very interesting, even alongside yung discussion natin sa Maharlika. So, uh, for one, uh, I'll continue studying the NDC more. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator uh, Antoveras. At this point, I'd like to recognize uh, Senator Nancy Binay for her questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. But, um, since we're already discussing the NDC, but for example, given more funding, hindi ba mag-level level up the new NDC? Kasi ngayon parang you're just forced to do yung mga medium type of investment because kulang nga kayo sa funding. But what if, kunyari, yung 75 billion ng land bank bigay namin sa inyo, hindi ba mag-level up the new, yung pasukan na negosyo? 
Short answer, ma'am, yes. And uh, we we are preparing the white paper in preparation for a proposal to, uh, for a new charter for MDC. Uh, however, uh, I would like to note that this will take a long time. And uh, we feel that the uh, the government, uh, the economic team, uh, is in the on the right track in pushing for a Maharlika fund at this time, at the soonest possible time. Technically, we can do it. It will just take a lot more time than uh, than at the level where Maharlika is now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. But in the long run, hindi ba competition yung Maharlika Investment Corporation sa NDC? Kasi parang, why would I give my money to you when I can put it sa Maharlika Corporation na tax-free siya, um, mas marami siyang uh, incentives? Mr. Chair, if I may. Th th thank you, um, Senator. Uh, I'll answer that question to, in two ways. So, technically, yes, our charter will be a competition Except for uh, the scale and the scale and uh, uh, time. You know? So first, Maharlika, uh, if you if you compare it with the how the other funds were put up, it would take at least two years to set up. So we don't see us as a competition because we are already here, and uh, we are already working on the smaller deals. Uh, we want to we want to be able to take on bigger deals, uh, so that uh, we can take advantage. Because because I am on the ground, I talk to the business people. The, the the sentiment on the Philippines is very positive. They want to really invest. They want to know how. So, uh, habang uh, while Mahalika is taking such a long time, the investments are ready. So. We see this as an opportunity for NDC as a great vehicle and investment time to take advantage and, you know, lagay nyo sa amin. Um, on the long term, we don't see it as a competition because we do not intend for compete with the national government. So the Maharlika is meant to uh, support, the way I understand it, to support the budget uh, uh, budget limitations of the national government in supporting the projects of the different agencies. We do not have that scale. We are looking at gaps. So uh, that, the, that the agencies may perhaps not be doing, we can focus on those gaps. So we really see it, uh, see there to be a synergy even when Maharlika is established. So the, the second part of my answer, ma'am, would be that uh, uh, when the Maharlika Fund is set up, necessarily it will go and set up sub funds specific to its development focus. For example, a sub fund on agriculture, a sub fund on uh, other specific areas. Because uh, and and that's where we see that we can have a synergy, uh, complement, and uh, value. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Ah, uh, sige. Um, question lang. Maharlika Investment Corporation ba? Is this a GOCC? Um, ano bang classification niya? I don't know. Maybe from the economic team can answer that question. Uh, Ma'am, um, it will be set up as a GOCC. Okay. So kung GOCC siya, um, can a um, foreign entity buy into the corporation it, there would be some, some uh, funds that uh, the offshore uh, investment corporations can also participate kasi in the corporation going, uh, na, fund, kasi we have two levels mommy eh. you have the corporation and then you have the funds the funds will be the entry point for um of course the investments from the offshore companies so in the corporation itself walang foreign that will be 100 percent owned as, by the government yes as it, as it is right now um set up um, but um it can also be later on open for um joint ventures from the corporation to another corporation of an offshore company 
Ano ho ulit yun? Um, so, mam- so, in the future, pwede mangyari na yes, 60% owned by a foreign company and then 40% na lang yung sa Philippines? Um, pwede dun sa po, corporation, ha? Hindi po dun sa MIC mismo, but the MIC can enter into joint ventures with other uh, offshore companies. Yun na nga. Um, so, hindi po sila papasok dun sa Never. MIC. They can never enter it, into the corporation itself. Um, yung the MIC, hindi po pwede right now. So, uh, na. so in the future, pwede? Based on the current legislation, ma'am, it is set up as a GOCC. Kasi nga po, wala pa po yung uh, opening from other offshore companies to uh, also participate in the corporation. But in the fund, they can participate. Hindi, yun na nga. Treasure the land. Yung sa, yung sa fund, clear yan na they can participate. But the corporation itself... Right now, um, based on the current legislation, yeah. wala pa pong uh, ganong participation from offshore. So it can also Pero san siya papasok na in the future. Ma'am, uh, that's why uh, like we were also suggesting eventually we can look into the possibility that uh, multilateral companies uh, would be able to participate like the likes of IFC, um the um, ADB or even some other bilateral. So that can also be. You know, like kasi parang I read din sa so it can be pwede ba yon na sa GOCC pwede papasok na foreign I think the OGCC has an uh, opinion. Uh, if, uh, maybe he, they can uh, shed some light on your question, Senator. Chairman. Uh, so, uh, uh, you are recognized, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Office of the Government, the Office of the Government Corporate Council is the statutory legal council of all government corporations, and uh, it has control and supervision over all government uh, corporations. So... First of all, I would like to state that uh, as regards the NDC, the NDC is supposed to invest in development projects. The proposed Maharlika Investment Fund is supposed to invest in bonds, equities, securities, so that it can invest in development projects. The National Development Company will have to uh, rely on funds that it currently has right now or will be given to it. But the Maharlika Investment Fund under the Maharlika Investment Corporation would be the corporation, the government corporation that will uh, invest in securities, bonds, and uh, equities. Now, to address the question on whether the Maharlika Investment Corporation will become a, uh, can, uh, can include foreign corporations. The way it uh, is envisioned is that there will be six members of the board that will come as ex officio, like the president of the Land Bank, the president of the DBP, uh, and it's actually to be chaired by the Secretary of Finance. But there will be members of the board of directors who will come from the private uh, equity uh, contributions. So to answer it, uh, the OGCC also has uh, made in its position paper so as to clarify the membership in the board of directors. We wish to point out that being a corporation, it may have to follow the provisions of the corporation code as regards the representation in the board of trustees or board of directors of the Maharlika investment uh, so I wish to distinguish the difference between the Maharlika Investment Corpora Corporation and the Maharlika Investment Fund. The Maharlika Investment Fund will be managed by the Board of Trustees of the Maharlika Investment Corporation, which shall then now uh, raise the funds to be contributed by other government corporations, principally from land bank and other uh, banks the country, but then it is supposed to find the maximum return for uh, these funds. It is hoped that with the, with the funds being consolidated on a much larger scale, then it will be in a better position to uh, invest these funds. Because as can be affirmed by the economic sectors, 
the size of the fund, the bigger the bigger the size of the fund, the bigger its uh, the bigger will be its uh, uh, ability to manage and end and maximize uh, these funds. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, yeah, just a follow up. Um, um, tanong ko kasi in the few parang nabanggit ni Treasurer Dillon, in the future, yung corporation pwedeng magkaroon ng foreign entity in the Maharlika Corporation. Pwede po ba yun? Under the proposed bills, pwede po yun. And they Under the, and as, a, as the OGCC. Tama ba yun? Pwede po yun. Kaya po ang request po ng uh, Office of the Government Corporate Council, let us put in the proposed bill on how these uh, foreign uh, investors will be represented the Maharlika investment creation uh, because it the bill proposes six members coming from the private uh, sector. So our proposal is that uh, the bill also lays down the parameter on how the six seats in the board will be allocated. It is proposed and that and after there existing GOCC na may foreign entity in the board or he owns the, corpor the, the corporation. Um, meron po yatang mga government corporations na, uh, na nag-invest sa government uh, corporations provided that the constitution requires that the control should be under the government. Like what corporation po? In the case of uh, corporations like, because uh, po yung National Grid Corporation na privatized po uh, from the National uh, Power uh, Corporation. So, nagkaroon po dito ng mga foreign investments. But, meron pa rin po rito control ang uh, National a, a Power Corporation. A corporation po na hindi privatized. It's still a GOCC pero may foreign entity dun sa corporation. Pwede po, Mr. Chair. Uh, pwede po na basta ang government corporation ay merong uh, investment. Ang uh, yeah, government. Yeah. Yeah. Ang, ang, yung sa investment po, naiintindihan ko yun na pwede tayong mag... na pwede may pumasok na investor dun sa investment. But yung, yung corporation itself, yung board itself, meron ho ba tayong existing na GOCC na dun sa board na yon may nakaupo na foreign entity? Ang binanggit ko po kanina, yung katulad po ng National Grid. Ang Pero hindi na-counted yun dahil privatized na siya eh. Uh, meron pa rin pong uh, ownership doon ang, uh, I think, National Development Company. I think the National Development Company wants to comment on that. Uh, due respect to uh, Justice uh, Roger, um, the National Development Company owns subsidiaries, uh, the 40% of which are owned by foreign companies uh, because it, it was uh, uh, gained by the National Development Company through the Laurel Langley Agreement. So uh, Chevron is 40% owner of the Batangas land, uh, which is a GOCC. 60% uh, is NDC. Same thing with uh, General Electric, and Goodyear, and Shell Corporation. So these are 40% owners of GOCCs. Yeah, but it's a national development company. We are a foreign, wala kayong foreign entity. We are also a GOCC, 100% owned by the national government. Yeah, nga. But in the Maharlika Corporation setup, in the future, pwedeng magkaroon ng foreigner dun sa board. Tama po ba? And would this be the first time na magkakaroon tayo ng GOCC na may foreign entity dun sa board? Kasi nga po yung mga subsidiaries, katulad po ng example ng, uh, sa National Development Company, yung mga subsidiaries niya, nga, meron pong... Uh, Hindi ako yung mga subsidiaries kasi para nag-invest si NDC. But technically, this is the board that will manage the fund, right? So, meron ho bang kapareho? ng Maharlika Corporation na kung saan magkakaroon ng foreign entity. Meron ho ba tayong existing na GOCC na may foreign entity yun na nakaupo din sa board? Yun pong subsidiaries ng National Development Company ay government 
uh, uh, GOCC GOCC si then. Po ang ta a classification nila. GOCC then. Uh, if I may, since NDC is 100% owned by the national government, then our 60% ownership in our subsidiary makes it GOCC. So in when you're asking if there is a current GOCC where foreigners are seated on the board, well, we have four under the NDC, and they are GOCCs. And they sit on our, our board. The foreigners sit on our board marami of po, these sagot, companies. Marami yeah. po. Kasi po yung mga subsidiaries ng mga government corporations, they are also classified as can, GOCCs. Oh, so, so can we ask COA, paano yung auditing procedures dito sa mga GOCC na merong foreign entity? So do you also audit yung private part? Paano nyo na-differentiate kung ano yung pera na private saka ano yung pera ng government? Uh, so, so, I, know, ba tayo think, uh, yeah. so, yes. uh, I think the call will be answered. But, but in our case, as long as it's a GOCC, it falls under both the GCG. So, so and that's one of our challenges because eh, our subsidiaries are also under the GCG and our subsidiaries also remit 50% uh, of its income to the national government. So we're very similar. Si niya, now audit din siya ng kuwa. Yes. Wait. Yes, yes, yes. As long as, uh, as long as it's a GOCC, it will be audited by kuwa. We get the opinion of kuwa. Uh, yes, I will uh, direct the secretary to please uh, communicate that request and get the opinion of the kuwa. Mr. Chairman. Ma'am, may I? Uh... I think uh, we have uh, someone from the, the COA online now. Uh, yes, can can we can we be, can we uh, ask them to give us a statement? Thank. Good morning, Mr. Chair. May I refer the question to uh, Director Adela Dondonilla of the cluster? Yes, you may. Ma'am Adel? Yes. Uh, uh, chair and members of this committee, uh, the audit of NDC is under the jurisdiction of the COA corporate government audit sector. Uh, we have an assigned audit team with NDC. Unfortunately, uh, we have no representative uh, coming from the audit group who is present now at this committee hearing since mm. uh, no invitation for the auditor was issued to them. Uh, mm -hmm. Since we we just invited uh, representatives coming from uh, the banks who are directly involved in uh, giving an opinion on the proposed Senate bill. NDC uh, was not yet invited. Um, maybe we can uh, uh, increase the vo maybe you can uh, increase your uh, increase the volume a little bit so we can uh, hear it. I think the senator uh, senator Nance, uh, senator Bina is uh, difficulty. Uh, it was not able to catch that. So if you can repeat and increase the volume. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, this is Director Adela Dondonilia, uh, the director of the COA Corporate Government Sector Cluster One. The audit of the NDC is under uh, the jurisdiction of the COA Corporate Government Audit Sector. Unfortunately, uh, we did not provide a link for the auditor of NDC, considering that we only invited auditors uh, heading the uh, government uh, financial institutions, particularly the banking uh, sec uh, the banking cluster, which is under my a direct supervision. So as of now, we don't have any representative from uh, the audit group of the National Development Council, Council uh, uh, Corporation, but it is under the jurisdiction of our sector, the corporate government audit sector. Siguro, Ms. Adela, um, I don't know if he can answer. 
Um, ano ba yung auditing procedure pag commingled yung funds? Kung may um, government money and then may private sector money. Because I think eventually magiging ganito yung magyayari dun sa Maharlika Fund. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, in fact, in one of the comments in the proposed in the position paper that we have submitted for the proposed Senate bill, we also uh, raised that issue, considering that uh, in the case of the MIF, the, the fund, the fund for the MIF, wherein there are, uh, there will be uh, investments coming from the private and uh, the government sector. We raised the issue as to the extent of the audit of the Commission on Audit. Uh, as a process, we only audit. Uh, funds coming from the government entities. So if MIC is considered as a corporation, then it will be subject to the Commission on Audit uh, jurisdiction. However, if in the future it will be uh, also be funded out of foreign uh, private entities, then uh, the audit jurisdiction should be clearly established in the bill because there will be a problem as to the extent of the audit of the Commission on Audit. Um, so, ano nakikita niyong solution dun sa ganong scenario? Because the suggestion is to get a third party. Uh, Would I, that be allowed by COA rules? Uh, How can the fund be um, compliant with uh, COA auditing procedures? Uh, uh, Your Honor, I think uh, referring to the engagement of an external auditor coming from the private sector, that is as far as the MIF, the fund is concerned. Uh, we also cited our comments and recommendations in our position, pa uh, position paper. As we have stated, uh, as we are referring to Section 39 of the proposed bill, where it says that uh, the Board of Directors shall engage for its accounting period as soon as practicable after the commencement of the relevant accounting period, an internationally recognized auditing firm to be external auditor of the fund, of the fund and to audit its financial statement. Now, COA in its position refers to the ruling in the Development Bank of the Philippines uh, under a Supreme Court uh, decision under GR number 88435, dated January 16, 2002, uh, which considered the engagement of an external auditor in addition to that provided by COA. So, uh, to summarize that uh, Supreme Court ruling, it says there that uh, COA's findings and conclusions necessarily prevail over those of private auditors, at least insofar as government agencies and officials are concerned. The findings and conclusions of the private auditor may guide private investors or creditors who require such private audit. Government agencies and officials, however, remain bound by the findings and conclusions of the COA, whether the matter falls under the first or second paragraph of six, Section 2, unless, of course, such findings and conclusions are modified or reversed by the courts, meaning uh, findings of the Commission on Audit are reversed by the Supreme Court because uh, as a constitutionally mandated uh, institution, only the Supreme Court can reverse the findings of the Commission on Audit. So that's included in our position paper, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Pa. Yung BBP, who bang ngayon may external auditor ka? We have four. Uh, we we fact, still have. We, we have still have. A, no, no. The COA is the external auditor of the BBP. BBP. Yeah, walang third party auditor. Yeah. Okay. So wala pa. So wala pa tayong government owned. So tayong GOCC na may third party auditor the moment. 
I think, see, yes, po. Uh, Mr. Chair, to answer it directly, if a corporation is classified as a GOCC, then it is subject to commission and audit auditing. So if the Maharlika Investment Corporation is going to become a GOCC, then it will be subjected to audit. And even its legal even all its le contracts uh, and legal department will be under the control and supervision of the Office of the Government Corporate Council. Question mo, bakit hindi ho bang mangyari yung scenario na hindi GOCC yung Maharlika Investment Corporation? Pag kinlasify nyo po, nasa sa inyo po, na, that is part of the legislate, plenary power of the legislature. Na, na, pero na ho bang ganon? Na parang we will be using technically government funds from Land Bank and DBP, pero yung corporation itself would not be classified as a GOCC? Meron, so anong, anong tawag, magiging tawag dun sa ganong? Meron po kasi set. tayong tinatawag na charter na creation of the legislature. Meron din po tayong mga corporations na created under the corporation uh, code. Pero kung classified po yan na uh, GOCC, then it is always subjected to COA auditing and also uh, the legal department is under the GCC. So, katulad po ng Clark Development Corporation, the best, I think that is one of the best examples. Ang Clark Development Corporation po ay subsidiary ng Basis Conversion Development uh, Authority. So, meron po, wala po siyang sariling charter but was created under the rules of the Securities and Exchange uh, Commission. But CDC is still classified as a government corporation. And therefore, it is subjected to COA auditing rules and also it's, all their contracts must be approved by the, of, by the Office of the Government Corporate Council. Pero, pero Treasurer De Leon, itong Harlika Investment Corporation is a GOCC, di ba? There would be eventually, po, uh, and if it's going to be, uh, of course, enough, uh, um, provided in the legislation, there would be limits in terms of the participation of uh, the private, uh, particularly the foreign ownership. Um, and also including in that would be their uh, um, constraints in being a members of the board of directors. Because like, uh, they could only be like uh, as a whole, maybe 5%. So they would not be able to participate in the, in the board. They would not have a seat in the board. Or even... Siguro po, they can also issue lang mga preps, so non-voting rights yun po sila. Um, wala pa po yun din sa current form of the bill? Wala po. So, saan po nat pwede na natin siya i-introduce uh, as part of the bill? Or ano bang ano, ano, bang, ano niya, uh, na eventually magkakaroon ng sariling charter yung corporation in the future? Or... Uh, it would still be legislated, ma'am, but in the legislation, you can already provide for those kind of limits para uh, the part uh, ownership of uh, foreign companies would also be uh, restricted. And even in terms of their participation in decision-making. Okay, thank you. Uh, during the previous hearing, I asked you, um, Land Bank, about their investment portfolios. Can I also ask DBP, um, like at the moment, how much dun sa fund nyo, ang pinapautang niya for developmental loans. How, are you also investing in equities, um, securities? May ganun po ba yung DBP? Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have, we have approximately, just a moment. Our total investable funds for approximately 900 billion. And um, investments po happen if there are excess, if there are excess funds. Right now po, for loans, uh, at least for 2022, our loans uh, portfolio is about 580 billion. And so in investments, we have about 330 billion po. And saan nyo ini invest itong 330 million? Mostly in government, mostly po in government securities as well. And how much is the yield? 
Um, ma'am, I'll have to get back to you on the yield for the government securities. I don't have it right now. More or less, oh, mga ilang percent? Offhand? Mga 4% to ba? Or Baka less po. A less. How come you're not investing sa higher yield? Um, Madam, as a... We have to be conservative. We're a bank and we do not take a lot of those risks. So we have to make sure that the risks are secure. And so we go we go with the, the most secure um, investments, which are usually bonds. And at bills. its present form, no bill, wala rin kayo makukuhang ano, no? uh, return on investment. In the current form, po, the proposed bill does not mention any returns to the GFIs. Would you want to have a return on your investment? <laughs> that would be most ideal. Po. Oh, kasi parang hindi kayo walang dividend, di ba? Yes, po. Thank you. Um, dun, please, dun who's the submission nyo na parang business plan ba to? Uh, business proposal for the MIF. Na stress test nyo ho ba itong mga... Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, so, we did uh, simulations. Um, Kaso lang ho, di ba, nagbago na yung BSP sa inflation projection nila for this year, di ba? Parang it's 6% already. For, for the year, ma'am. For the we're, year. Uh, we're looking at the long-term uh, average. Um, of course, they're still maintaining the target of 2 to 4%, ma'am. Kung going back dun sa stress test. Um, uh, so, we did um, plans po, several uh, iterations in terms of the our um yung pong, uh, investment uh, for both the capital and the sectoral investments so what we have right now is in terms of yung pong 10 year average po nun. so so ma'am uh, if ever uh, if i may uh, um so on a very conservative um on a portfolio po now we put everything just in the capital market investment which would include po yung mga um Market develop market equities. We identified proxies kasi po, mga emerging market equities, private equity infrastructures, um, and also money market funds. So if everything is placed 100% lang sa capital market, it would yield us on a 10-year average return, 6.51%. So that is, of course, uh, higher than the yung pong, uh, target inflation of 2 to 4%. And even higher than our 10-year uh, uh, average for our 10-year GS of 4.7%. On the um, aggressive um, position naman po, na everything would now be placed dun sa mga sectoral investments like uh, power, um, we have uh, mga real estate, um, infrastructure, and logistics. Then, Pero pwede din naman yung scenario na babagsak tong mga to, di ba? For example, yung... Uh, nangyari din sa Liman or because of the pandemic. Ah, uh, yeah. So, Na-assess na niya din po yan na yes, parang... Yes, so kasi ma'am, nung sa test, kasama po yung 20 and 21. Eh, kasama po, na-capture po yun dun sa uh, average 10 year. So, um, we're looking, if everything is placed sa sectoral investment funds, then it would be about 10.78%. So, that is even higher than the returns that they're getting right now, even... Um, and higher than the cost of borrowing nila, and higher than our 10-year GS yield nga po of 4.7%. Kasi if, um, and ma'am, if I may, uh, this would even provide yung pong ating GFIs more returns, given that right now they're also conservatively um, investing in the GS market. Pero may risk din, di ba? Um, Ma'am, kasama naman po yung when we evaluated kasi when we look at the proxies, kasama rin po yung the risk profile of these different proxies that we also used. So like for example, sa land bank, di ba meron kayong investment na 15%? Uh, yeah. Security su ba yun? Okay, uh, through the chairman, uh, yeah. Good morning, Senator Binay. As we reported uh, during the second hearing, 
the composition of our investment portfolio is uh, uh, 90 to 95 percent in government securities and um, bonds, and the 5 percent is in private uh, equities. Dun sa 5 percent niya, niyo na investment, ano siya dun sa asset class na investment niyo? Ano ba siya? Market equities, bonds, market equities, real estate. Uh, uh, the latest, may I give you the latest uh, just to um, correct. Uh, it's 98% lang, ma'am, uh, as uh, government debt securities. And uh, the 2% is in equities. So these are shares of stocks of uh, publicly listed uh what we call blue chip uh, corporations. May mga ano kayo? Like, or no? Do you buy uh, infra? Oh. Let me just check. Uh, yes, we do uh, have investments in equities of uh, big companies into power uh, real estate and uh, infra, major infra, and um, communication. Sige po. Um, okay, yun na lang muna po, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Bina. At this point, I'd like to recognize Senator uh, Wim Gachalian. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I'd like to take off where Senator uh, Binay ended earlier. Um, I was reading through the uh, proposed law. This is the Senate version filed by the Chair. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, no? uh, Treasurer Leah. Uh, the MIC will be the manager of the MIF, correct? And um, I'm, I'm looking at the structure of the MIC, and um, it seems to me that the MIC uh, can attract um, uh, investors outside. Tama po ba? Can attract private investments or private fund. capital. The fund. Um, uh, Senator, right now, in the current version, it's the fund. So they come in at the fund level? Yes, sir. Okay, but they get representation at oh. the corporate level, no, correct? Uh, right now, po, no, uh, because the, the the corporation is only represented by the founding members and the Secretary of Finance, and um, the advisory board would also uh, recommend who would be the independent directors. But here in, the, in Section uh, 19... Uh, six regular members representing the contributors of to the fund with the seats distributed in proportion to the corresponding investments. So in other words, uh, if there's a private equity coming in uh, at the fund level, uh, they're also represented at the corporation level. Uh, Tama? Uh. Uh, right now, sir, because um, the way it is written, the founding members are really just Land Bank, DBP, uh, for now. But there are reserved seats. Eh? There are six yeah, yeah, seats sir. reserved for... This would really be uh, for those nominees coming from Land Bank and DBP. Because uh, it's stated as the um, identified member right now is really the Land Bank, the CEO, the president of Land Bank and DBP. But uh, given the their representation, their uh, capitalization infusion into the corporation, they can also nominate uh, um, given the size of their contribution. Okay, okay. Just to clarify that. So, so the, the representing the contributors here, meaning the this is Land Bank and DBP? Yes, sir. Okay, will BSP be represented? Uh, if they, I think they are also a contributor, right? I, I they're also Pagor. They're also a contributor. Um, but uh, since for the bulk, the sizable amount is really coming from yes. the uh -oh. bank. So it would really be pro, maybe prorita to the contribution of both. Okay. So if a if a private investor coming comes into the fund, 
the private in the investor will not be represented at the corporate level. Yes, sir. Uh, as I've, we've mentioned, we're thinking of putting a cap in terms of limits. Limits in terms of how much um, outsider, uh, offshore uh, investment funds can participate in the corporation and also limit in terms of the individual, uh, like say a conglomerate, uh, would be participating to the fund. But that's not in the law. Um, not yet, sir. Uh, maybe we were thinking, kasi okay. baka sa IRR or, um, but maybe. Yeah, but uh, but uh, the law kasi is defined uh, uh, very tight in law. Eh. There's no room for, if that's your interpretation, there's no room for the private investor to be represented at the corporate level. Yeah, but, but eventually, kasi nga, sir, we're also putting limits. So definitely, they should they will not be represented maybe in the corporate level, in the at least for the board of directors, because there would be limits in terms of the size and there's a cap in terms of their participation. So if I'm a private fund coming in at the fund level, where will I be represented? Not in the not in the board level, sir. So where where is my where is my representation? Um, but you. Say if I'm, if for example, I want to be. I'm, I'm investing. Obviously, I want to be. Yes, but I, sir, I want to have representation. Yeah, but since there's a cop, um, uh, then it's really restricted in terms of how much you can only buy, both as an individual conglomerate and also um as a whole. Right. So, the, the, in in other words, the private fund will not be represented anywhere, Sorry. based on the law. Well, uh, right now the way it's uh, the way we're, it's crafted, sir. Will private equity be attracted to that? If I'm not, kaya nga sa PSA, tiba the whole point of uh, the private the public uh, services act is uh, for uh, foreign investors to have majority representation in the board. I know they're very very particular with representation at the board, obviously to protect their investments. No? Yeah, so, but because, uh, sir, there would also be independent directors naman that would also be... Uh, correct, but that's, they don't own the money. Iba yung may independent, iba yung ownership of the fund, no? or whatever they want to put. Can I, can I seek a clarification? Uh, earlier, it was mentioned that uh, like the uh, National Development Company has companies, joint venture companies, wherein the government owns 60% and and the foreigners own 40%. So actually, uh, if you're, if, if Mahalika got into a, uh, a partnership, PPP or, whatever, or something, uh, with... Uh, with uh, with the Maharlika Fund, then they could enter through that. Can I? Is that correct, Treasurer? Uh, yes, sir. Above. Okay. The way for them to enter and actually sit on the board, should they, 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 it was a JV company or they co they go in together, then I'll... It's in the JV yes. company that they... Yes, that's what I mean. Okay, okay. The, it's not in the corporate... So they could enter through the, through the JV company, like similar to what they did National Development Company. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, just with the permission of Senator... For, me, for clarification lang. Kasi doon nga sa section 90, nakasulat doon, letter E, six regular members representing the contributors to the fund. So for example, kung si Japanese company, mag i ako ng let's say $25 billion, I will not get a seat in the corporation? Uh, kasi ma, meron pong cap how much you can only invest. Yeah, but so, where so, is the cap? Um... We were thinking it can, we can put it in the IRR, but if it's needed, then we can put it in the law. Because uh, we're thinking um, that it's not really going to be. Uh, otherwise, they can hold majority position in the corporation already. You know? So, we lagi na lang natin dun yes, sa board na no foreign entity can be part of the board, regardless of investment, de ba? Na talagang dun sa pag sinayo ng six regular members, Filipino lang yung pwedeng umupo doon or yeah. ano ba yan or alisin na natin yung six regular members kasi parang sinabi mo yung six regular members will be coming from land bank and DBP yeah. so pwede eh, naman state na natin na DBP and LBP will get what three seats or the back instead of kasi vague yung six regular members eh parang um, pwede nyo ilagay doon sa IRR na makakapasok din yung foreign entity Mr. Chairman, maybe during the... Interview. Yes, thank you. Those are very valid comments. And even the Department of Finance has uh, discussed that and they're open to these uh, changes in the composition of the board. Thank you. Mr. Chair, with the one quick point with the indulgence of Sen Sherwin also. 
Salamat po, uh, Chalian and Mr. Chair. Just a, a quick point. In the previous hearing, uh, Minority Leader Sen Pimentel made a manifestation which included that, as presented by National Treasurer De Leon, the allowable investments um, section has a provision with a last sentence and other allowable investments decided by the board. So me 2% cap on the allowable investments, but that section 17 allows for additional investments without a cap. So just as an addition to the uh, line of questioning of uh, Sen Sherwin with the National Treasurer. Salamat Sen Sherwin, salamat Mr. Chair. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh... Center is uh, um, no, because I was made to understand that the fund no, uh, will be raising capital through the private sector, and it's envisioned. Pang I read somewhere that uh, maybe at one point it can go initial public offering, but the the contemplation is to really attract uh, other private funds to join in. No, and uh, my thought. Initial thought was they will come in at the six um, contrib six uh, regular members, no, representing contributors. But if they're not coming there, um, I don't know where they will be represented at the board level. No, and um, uh, I shared the thoughts of Senator Binay that typically funds would have, would like to have representation at the board, no, to protect their investments, to protect their um, equity so uh, if that will not if that is not reflected here in the law um, I, I'm, 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 I'm asking a question I'm wondering where will they be where will they be represented at what level will they be represented um, so um, the way we are thinking uh, Senator Gachalian is that if the Maharlika uh, would be co-investing or forming a joint ventures with the company. So they will form a company, right? So the representation, since their investment is not really into the corporation, but in the joint venture. Yeah, that's at the investment level. There, there are two levels, eh? the fund level and the investment level. The investment level, I, 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 uh, that's an independent entity. They'll have their own board, but at the, at the fund level. At the corporation well, level. At the cor corporation level. Um, so uh, what we're uh, thinking of right now, uh, Senator, is that because of the limits that uh, would be imposed, then they would not really be represented in the board because uh, for you to be like uh, in the board, then you would have to have uh, like more than 25, perhaps 25 percent, um, you know, shares in the corporation. But since uh, the limits would... Um, prevent you from uh, getting that much uh, shareholding, then you would not really be a member of. So it, it's not uh, the direction of attracting at the fund level anymore? Uh, at, not at the corporation. Mm -hmm. They will still can participate, sir, but maybe not be a member of the board. Is that possible, Mr. Shirley, that they'll be putting funds, but not... But, but How would they... funds would not really be more than what uh, the investments of the government would be. Uh, okay. So the majority would still have to be government. All right. Okay. So that's the intention. They'll have uh, minor investments yes. uh, at the fund level. Yes. Okay. Um, my next is also from Senator Binay on the, on the issue of uh, auditor. I, I read here uh, in Section 29, engagement of an external auditor. This is normal for any fund no, to have an external auditor. In fact, I commend the uh, levels of uh, safeguards uh, in the law. There's an internal auditor, there's an external auditor, and also the Commission on Audit. So um, I, I want to understand. No? Um, so they'll be getting an external auditor internationally recognized. Uh, this is probably the one that will audit the books, sign the uh, the annual financial report, and publish it. No? Um, and then you have the COA. What's, what is the relationship between the external auditor and the COA? How will they be operationalized? No? There will be an external audit, auditor auditing, and there will be COA auditing. So how will this be operationalized? And what if there's a case of COA renders a different opinion, and then the external auditor will render a different opinion. And that happens. Huh? In fact, in the local government units, 
different co-auditors will have different opinions no and that's a that's a well known uh, anecdote no so number one is how will this be operationalized you have two auditors auditing the same entity and what if there will be conflicts in terms of opinions who will be recognized which auditor will be recognized no? uh well, uh, first of all, um, Senator, um, it's envisioned that we also have an international external auditor, given that we will also be wanting to attract uh, foreign investors into the corporation and into the fund. So uh, we just also have to make sure that it complies with the international uh, accounting standards, reporting, etc. But uh, I think um, the opinion of COA is that um, in case of conflict, then it would have to be COA that would uh, opinion that will prevail. Permission of Senator Rogachale. Yung sa Malaysia ba may external auditor na international? We will check muna, ma'am. <laughs> Parang mula yata. <laughs> we'll check muna po. Be in the law, treasurer, that go uh, in, in, uh, loosely, no? In cases where there will be conflict of opinions, uh, the opinion of COA should prevail. Is that a sound uh, uh, provision? Because typically, uh, I, I know, for example, uh, KPMG. No? KPMG is an internationally renowned auditor. No? And uh, if they sign their books, typically everyone acknowledges it's accurate. But COA obviously is a domestic entity. No? So even though they sign their books, I don't know if foreign uh, uh, entities, especially if you plan to attract uh, uh, minor investment to the fund, will they recognize the uh, signature of COA? No? This is taking into consideration an international perspective uh, on the fund. No? So... Uh Sir, uh, I think Section 40 provides that the on the audit of the COA, and um, under that section, it um, provides that uh, COA will prescribe the guidelines of the audit of both the corporation and the fund, and um, the COA will be coordinating with the external auditor as provided in Section 37. Yeah, I saw the coordination, but I'm just coming up uh, thinking, uh, uh, thinking out loud no, on extreme cases. For example, you just come up with a different opinion. Nangyari kasi yan eh. No? That's why normally I only have one uh, auditor. No? But uh, in cases where they have different opinions, no? uh, who will prevail? No? And, but if COA is the one you are saying, then uh, I'm just, again, thinking ahead, will that be a, a, a sound... Um, uh, provision in the law no uh, considering that we are internationalizing this this fund no so maybe a, a point that we should think about no moving forward and attorney quevedo thank you mr chair as stated already by the commission the uh, citing the supreme court ruling of dbp then it is the coa that uh, will prevail it has the constitutional power to the all government owned controlled corporations so we cannot legislate if it is a if it, the supreme court has already ruled that all government owned and controlled corporations subject to COA auditing rules then it will be COA that will prevail if we are to legislate that uh, the audit auditors will uh, Bail against that part, then the Supreme Court will simply strike it down. I think that is the best way to answer it. The, if it is a government court, if it is a GOCC, then under the ruling in DBP by the Supreme Court, then the Commission and Audit will uh, bail. Uh, Ma'am, to your question po on Kazana, Ernst and Young is the auditor. So they had an internationally renowned external auditor tapos napangayan pa sila ng malaking pera. Ma'am, that's Kazana, hindi po yung... Ay, hindi, ay, hindi yung... Hindi, hindi yung M... M1... M1... Ayang M1DB. Thank you. That's something to think about, uh, Treasurer Leia, no, on uh, the auditing uh, principles. And then, um, Mr. Chair, I, I, I was in receipt of... Uh, I think this is from... Uh, 
Treasure Leia also a uh, a proposed um, a business proposal. Uh, maybe maybe hear from Treasure uh, this uh, business proposal so we can put it on record. Yes, yes, please uh, proceed. And uh, it has been submitted to the committee, so it's in the record. But anyway, yeah. we can have uh, the Treasure elaborate. So, um, if I may, um, uh, Chairman, uh, um, in, in the submitted business proposal, that what we have um, developed is something that would also adhere to the dual objectives of the, of the fund of optimizing the financial returns and, of course, accelerating the development of infrastructure and other priority projects. <laughs> the, so, the, the, for the MIC, we envision that it would be maintaining two major sub funds specifically first we have a capital market investment sub fund that will prioritize the generation of returns from investments in a diversified uh, portfolio of um, capital market ac assets to meet the former objective the second um investment sub fund which is uh, on a more sectoral basis which um wherein it will participate in various high return projects that are strategically relevant to the country's sustained development in order to attain the second objective. So for the methodology, the potential returns of the MIC, of the MIC um, has been estimated using the following approach. First, we identified the investment vehicles and the corresponding allocation profile for each of the two major sub-funds. And um, this was accompanied by sort of mirroring the portfolio, the strategic asset allocation of um, an established sovereign wealth fund in the region. Second, we also uh, um, tried to identify the appropriate domestic funds holding companies and indices when available that will serve as the proxies for determining the return of each asset class. And finally, we generated the potential long-term rate of return for each asset class using uh, statistical techniques and matching the resulting returns with the portfolio allocation assignments to produce a 10-year series of aggregate portfolio returns. So for the uh, capital market uh, investment sub-fund, the investment vehicles are local proxy used for um, the developed market equities, nominal bonds, those that in, uh, invest in emerging market equities, real estate, and private equity infrastructure. For the sectoral investment sub-fund, we also identified uh, investment sectors and local proxy companies, uh, and these are in the um, uh, sectors of power, real estate, infrastructure, and logistics. Now, um, for the estimated returns, following the methodology uh, we have described, the MIC may generate a return of around 6.51% to 10.78% depending on the blend of placements between the capital market investment sub-fund and the sectoral investment sub-fund. So um, in the case one, when all are in, um, on a more conservative uh, portfolio, um, when everything is invested in the capital market investment sub-fund, the return is higher, it's about 6.51%. So um, based on the, um, the hurdle rate, is higher than the upper bound of the BSP's long-term inflation target of 4%, and also um, it implying that um, we are yielding a positive return, and at the same time, it is also higher than the current 10-year government GS, or not even the current right now, but on the long-term average of 10-year GS yield of 4.7%, indicating that it is better return than, than the traditional conservative investment option. So um, on the second case, when it is um, invested all on the sectoral investments, the return would be, uh, the potential return is about 10.78% on average for the next 10 years. And, um, and uh, of course, we'd like to diversify the portfolio. And at the same time, since uh, these are long gestating periods associated with the projects under the sectoral investments, the, this would be a more realistic allocation strategy. And for this, uh, on a 50-50 allocation between the two major sub-funds, the expected return on equity is around 8.64% per year on average, uh, which is also double the 4% upper bound of the long-term inflation target and more than 2% above the most recent yield of our comparative 10-year GS benchmark. Thank you. Thank you, Treasurer. So basically what you're seeing here in um, uh, 
uh, the uh, business proposal, um, if it's 100% in capital markets, it's 6.5% return for the next 10 years. If it's uh, purely on sectoral, which is um, infrastructure mostly, uh, will be 10.78% return over the next 10 years. If it's 50-50, it's 8.64%. Uh, no? um, I'm just curious on the on the infrastructure asset, no? infrastructure investments. I think the uh, the capital market is quite straightforward. A lot of you can get proxies uh, uh, on the internet, no? um, it, and and a lot of them are are either uh, indexed to to, uh, to 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 a bunch of uh, equities. So it's easy to uh, get some form of uh, proxy for that. But for the sectoral investment fund, in which this is one of the main reason why we are creating the Maharlika Investment Fund, how did we get uh, the 10.78? Oh. Um, yes, sir. Go ahead, yes. Um, we identified the returns on the various um, infrastructure companies, uh, those that are um, concentrated on power, um, of course, the mixed bag of infrastructure, and also logistics and um, real estate. So, can you cite some example, treasurer, just to give us an appreciation? Like, for example, here in the in the power sector, you said power generation, yes, uh, solar farms, um, and then real estate, uh, uh, yes, uh, mixed use commercial. Can you cite an example? Can you demonstrate to us that uh, investing in these companies will yield ten percent? Um, the, the local corporates, so like for power, since they are also naman investing uh, mainly concentrated on power, like what is power, EDC. So we look into their return for the past uh, 10 years. So on average for power, it's about 14.4%. For real estate, um, we look into, um, of course, Ayala, Artha, Robinsons, Double Dragon. It's about 12.3%. So infrastructure, sir, um, those that cover all um, um, infrastructure projects. So it's a, the example would be like, again, Ayala Corp. Um, we also have um, SM, San Miguel, um, the MCI. It's about 9.6%. And for logistics, um, basically ICTSI, 9.1%. You look at those companies and uh, came out with... Uh... Uh, I guess an average or um, a sum of uh, ten point seventy eight. Yeah, but it's not, sir, we simulated uh, so ten thousand yeah. simul <laughs> simulations we did. So um, given um, you know, using uh, different variables also, no. So so what would be the average yield for the you know looking forward? Uh, if you invest today, what would be the average return for the next ten years? And uh, again. Uh, the, just clarification, uh, are we looking at a 50-50% portfolio uh, or how? how so sir, that's just being, con uh, basically you want to diversify and you want to be conservative, but you can go more into the sectorals and uh, and uh, that would be yielding you, um, if it's 25-75, uh, and, and even in terms of the, um, these returns, sir, you would also note, these returns are even higher than the cost of borrowing of our um, those that indulge in in these infrastructure projects. The cost of borrowing for them. Um, uh, Treasurer, Mr. Chair, maybe request for the. Uh, I know this is probably a snapshot, no, a a much more detailed breakdown, so we can uh, uh, analyze also um, uh, how the returns were. Uh, uh, computed, and we would like to understand no, um, the uh, investment horizon. It, it's a good snapshot for now, but uh, uh, for us to greater understand it, uh, we'll request from uh, the DOF a submission of the assumptions and the details. Yes, please, please submit to the committee. Yeah. Thank Mr. You. Chairman, so just uh, additional then, because it's just like the annual returns. But we know that it's a that it's a scenario can they also submit to the committee yung potential loss? Yeah. Kaya, ma'am, we did the simulation. 
yung going forward. For example, sige. siguro nung during the pandemic. Sige po. But um, na-offset kasi ma'am, even naman, you know, going forward uh, will also be... Good. Yeah, but you know, who knows? 10 years from now, another pandemic comes, di ba? Sige Wag po. naman sana. Sige ma'am, we'll submit po. Sige, maybe we can, uh, in, your, in your modeling, maybe we can have some, uh, uh, I guess, these worst case scenarios and... Uh, just just for the information. Although, of course, we look at a 10-year horizon, so it's ups and downs. We look at the, the general trend, but uh, maybe we can uh, give some more information regarding possible downside. Mr. Chair, just to give uh, the others uh, a chance to answer a question, I'll, I'll, I'll um, uh, wait for the second round. Yes, uh, thank you. At this point, can we recognize uh, Senator uh, uh, Antoveros? Salamat, Mr. Chair. Um, okay, uh, I'll, I'll follow the example of uh, uh, Senga Chalian. I'll take off, as he did, taking off from the last question of Sen Binay, I'll take off from his last question, uh, Mr. Chair, in this hearing. Uh, but before that, gusto ko lang ding i-make a record, Mr. Chair. I really appreciate uh, the line of questioning of Sens Binay and Gachalian um, about... How, for me, the interpret, how I interpret it is how to really keep his sovereign wealth fund sovereign in terms of ensuring the, the primacy of the, the government policy and even regulatory um, uh, agencies uh, in contemplating such a sovereign wealth fund. So to pick up from where Senga Chalian left off, uh, as a follow-up question, uh, to his line of questioning on the returns on investments in infrastructure. So are there credit rating reports for PP projects? And is there a credit rating report, for example, for the CDC? Uh, Napag-usapan din po kanina bilang subsidiary ng uh, BCDA. Meron po ba nun? It, who should I uh, address the question to, uh, Mr. Chairman? Is the PPP Center here? Oh, perhaps, uh, Chair... We, uh, PP Center is directed to Executive uh, Director Manalo. Yes, sir, please. Yeah, um, Jeff Manalo, DED of the PPP Center. Normally, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, uh, your honors, um, the credit rating of uh, the PPP program normally falls under the parang, bigger infrastructure portfolio. Um, so I think we can uh, get a copy of, of that if that's uh, needed. So you mean, sir, from the DPWH? No, ma'am. So that would be normally infrastructure uh, agencies would include not just DPWH but also um, DOTR projects also. And they would have those credit rating reports for the PPP projects? As part of the infrastructure uh, portfolio, uh, ma'am. So they would put? Uh, probably it would be good to submit a copy of the reports of the, the credit rating agency for the more specific uh, details. And may credit rating report din ba para sa isang specific corporation tulad ng CDC bilang subsidiary ng BCDA? Would you know? Kasi malamang ito rin yung pag-aaralan ng mga sabi natin foreign, uh, possible foreign uh, investors sa uh, Maharlika. Uh, yes, uh, Chair, if, if GM Mauricio could be recognized po. Sa GM Mauricio? Uh, recognized. Incidentally, I was the country head of uh, Thompson Ratings Philippines, which is an international credit ratings agency here. Now, Fitch Ratings. Uh, for credit ratings, normally, when you're talking about uh, issuing them, you're talking about the issuances. Uh, so you rate the issuances. As for the Philippine government, they have a sovereign credit rating because the Philippine government also issues financial instruments. For corporates who do issue uh, financial instruments then and they want to attract international and even local investments that is important for them to have a credit ratings locally we do have credit ratings companies and also internationally we have credit ratings agencies so as for a project that does not need to issue uh, any instrument to finance that particular project then there would be no need for a credit rating for that particular project 
So, for example, there would be no need for credit ratings for uh, agent or re credit ratings reports for agencies like CDC under the BCDA. Has now Fitch ever issued uh, credit rating reports for such so entities? They, they would issue the company, for example, opens uh, its shares for sale. Uh, f so they would have to have an external party like a credit ratings agency look after them because the, the purpose of the credit ratings is really the credit worthiness of the issuer. What is the risk for the investor to get back his money uh, at the appropriate time? So, uh, so in terms of looking at the um, Mr. Chair and Senator, you're in the correct line of questioning when you say, uh, when, you're, when you're asking about credit ratings, you're actually asking about an independent entity looking at uh, a project or organization with an impartial perspective and looking at the financial return. So that is what a, a credit rating, uh, that's the kind of credibility that a credit rating uh, gives to a project. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I might return to this uh, maybe in the second round. But, okay, to my uh, original uh, first question, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, in the previous hearing, again, uh, Sen Gachalian asked the BSP why, when the Senate was deliberating on the increased capitalization of the Banco Central, BSP officials even argued for a 400 billion peso capitalization instead of just 200 billion pesos. And Congress moved only 200 billion pesos. Pero mula po noon, um, after global commodity prices gyrated widely to where they are today, and finances became volatile in the course of the pandemic and of the Russian invasion, uh, aggression in Ukraine, our BSP uh, Deputy Governor Dakila said that it's okay for BSP's capital to be built up over a longer period. So my question, Mr. Chair, is, is it also the position of BSP Governor Lipe Medalia that despite the global economic volatility, it's all right to defer the build-up the BSP reserves to 200 billion pesos man lang to give way for financing a Maharlika investment company or a fund. And uh, what do the members of the Monetary Board also have to say, Mr. Chair? Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Uh, on the question of the good senator, um, at that time the BSP was negotiating for a capital increase. Uh, the BSP was incurring successive years of losses. Uh, it was, um, I think the data uh, presented then was 2016. And during that time, uh, the BSP was incurring five years of successive losses. Now, these losses emanated from the BSP's um, initiative in order to uh, address some of the volatilities in the foreign exchange. But recently, based on the um, uh, official uh, 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 reports of the BSP, we have incurred for the past three years, 2019 to 2021, the BSP has uh, recovered and uh, posted um, uh, income, income and was able to remit uh, dividends to the national government. Uh, just giving you the uh, information, the time that we were representing a capital increase, the BSP did not remit any dividends uh, to the government at that time. So in answering to the question whether the BSP can provide uh, uh, funds to the MIF, at this time, looking at the performance of the BSP 2019 to 2021, uh, the BSP can afford for two years temporarily to provide dividends to the MIF. Uh, of course, um, we are not uh, sure whether the uncertainties that befall in 2012 to, um, to 2016, where we had uh, incurred crisis and we need to, um, to, and we reported losses. We are not sure whether this will happen again. Uh, but, uh, but given the time frame of two years, given the time that uh, we have recovered 
and establish the strength of the financial position of the BSP, we can afford to uh, contribute uh, the dividends that accrues to the national government. And we recognize the fact that the um, Congress has the power of the purse to make use of the uh, remittance of the BSP to whatever purpose it uh, wants it to be. Salamat, ma'am. And of course, Congress is advised by the inputs from institutions uh, such as yourselves. Yung limang taon po ng successive losses, magkano cumulatively yung nawala sa Banko Central? Five years. Um, kaya hindi kayo noon. Uh, in, well, my colleague here is uh, calculating, but in 2012, our loss is uh, 59 billion. 2011, 33.7 billion. 2012, 95.4. 2013, 25 billion, and 20, 2014, 10 billion, and 2015, so, 4 billion. Pababa po siya. Yes po. So cumulatively, uh, one, 226 billion. 226 B cumulatively ang nawala po ng Banko Central nung limang taon of successive losses na kaya hindi kayo nakapag-remit. Nung past three years po, sabi nyo nakapag-recover na kayo, nakapag-remit -re muli. Magkano po yung um, recovered ng Banko Sentral sa tatlong taong ito? Based on our official release, and it's also available in our website, yes, the net income of the BSP in 2019 is 46.2 billion, 2020, 31.7 billion, 2021 is 34.7 billion po. So, mga 100 B, yeah, over, over plus, 100 B plus. So, hindi pa po nababawi yung 226 B na nawala po ng BSP nung limang taon. Tama po. Pero nagsimula na po kayong mag-remit muli. Opo. Opo. So, uh, may, may kulang pa po na mga 126 B para lang bawiin yung nawala sa atin nung limang taon. Pero sinasabi na ng Banko Sentral na can afford na yeah. sa loob ng dalawang taon to, uh, to invest in the Maharlika Investment Company and Fund. It, ito po ba yung position na rin ni BSP Governor Medalia? Uh, this is the official position of the BSP, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I would also like to raise, uh, well, when the BSP Charter was amended, uh, it also allowed the BSP to expand its policy toolkit. In other words, po, there are other opportunities for the BSP uh, to rate, deliver its mandate by stability. So in addition to the additional capital, we were also allowed to expand the policy toolkit. In other words, we were allowed to issue our own instrument so that we can continuously perform our mandate of policy stability. I'm sorry, monetary stability. Which is also why kahit po sa isang layperson tulad ko ma'am, hindi naman ako banker, uh, monetary stability ay mga nga, mga, mga nga ilangan ng, ay kanina narinig ko po yung sinabi ng DBP, usually ang mga banko, you are more conservative. So parang mahirap ding isipin yung uh, in a way the risk you are taking to your own stability, internal stability. Kung may babawiin pang higit isang daang bilyong piso but uh, you will you will uh, use your expanded policy policy toolkit you will use yung mga bagong instrumentong inisyo ninyo uh, to uh, afford a two year investment or an investment over two years sa uh, sa Maharlika um anun, ito rin po yung monetary board position tungkol sa Maharlika vis-a-vis -vis yung initial na capitalization targets ng Banko Sentral? It is po. Uh, okay po. It is. Well, uh, even at this point, it would seem to me and perhaps to resource persons alimbawa mula sa Foundation for Economic Freedom na baka Banko Sentral is trying to please Malacanang. Baka it seemingly, and ito yung pinaka-worrying para sa mga mamamayan at mga mambabatas uh, tulad ko, that it seems, no, there's been a bit of public wondering about this in the past several days. It seems na demonstrating a 
uh, loss of BSP's independence, and uh, we are concerned about the institution at the expense, precisely, of Banco Central's ability to maintain macroeconomic stability in the future. Uh, I hope I'll be proven wrong, or I am wrong and will be proven wrong about this, kasi uh, medyo uh, irreplaceable lang isang institution tulad ninyo. Uh, given our current economic status, still emerging from the pandemic, a recession, and then uh, uh, facing the, the possibility, you know, uh, uh, having this proposal about a Maharlika investment company uh, and fund. Pero salamat po, ma'am, at salamat, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Chair, may now inquire if the PPP Center is ready to explain to the committee how the mobilization of private domestic capital through the PPP platform will change once there's already a Maharlika fund. Yes, you recognize the PPP centers recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, okay, so um, we have submitted uh, two uh, conceptual models mm -hmm. on, on how PPP projects uh, would look differently if the proposed MIF is uh, legislated. Um, uh, before that, uh, Mr. Chair, part of our submission is that we want to uh, just put on the table five uh, considerations just to give us a complete uh, picture before we, we, we describe the conceptual models. So the first one is that um, the financing risk in PPP projects is generally borne by the private uh, sector. So in the, in the executive branches, uh, generic preferred risk allocation matrix, the financing risk is normally borne uh, by the private sector alone. Um, with the MIF, this uh, would change as there would be uh, some risks on the part of government, although we also note that these could be fixed uh, in terms of structuring um, the particular PPP project. Uh, there could be uh, ways to mitigate this. So, for example, we could put in the minimum equity requirement on the part of the private proponent such that the skin, the, uh, skin in the, on the game of the private sector is still intact. So this is something that's workable. The second is that another change that we could see are the uh, rules, the different rules of the government in a PPP project. Right now, there are normally two roles um, uh, of the government in, in a user-based uh, PPP project, user fee-based PPP project. Uh, what are these? So one is as implementing agency, which is the public sector partner of uh, PPP contract, and the other one as uh, the regulator. Um, which sets and approves the ad uh, adjustment of tariffs in PPP projects. With the MIF, the government will have a third role to play that is as an investor. So um, this is not generally wrong as this is also being practiced uh, elsewhere. But the critical thing is making sure that all these three roles uh, do not conflict uh, uh, with, with each other. And this could be set uh, clearly uh, as to which on the part of the government is going to play these uh, three roles. Um, another consideration that we have uh, looked into is the current termination, termination payment uh, compensation framework for PPP projects. Um, in the status quo, the PPP governing board, which is shared by uh, NEDA and as it, uh, uh, where DOF is also a member of our vice chair, uh, the existing uh, compensation framework in case a PPP project terminates is that it allows lenders to recover the outstanding uh, debt on the core asset. So normally, nasa dulo lagi yung uh, uh, main investor. So that's going to be uh, a change if the MIF uh, is legislated. But this is a policy decision that the uh, PPP governing board uh, could look into. As currently, this is not uh, the framework we are in. Um, second to the last, uh, Your Honors, is that uh, for PPP projects structured as availability-based uh, or availability payments-based PPP projects, so this is as opposed to what I was describing earlier as user fee-based PPP projects, um, we're thinking uh, uh, these are projects that would be needing 
uh, financial support from the government, normally in the form of viability gap funding or a share in, in the project cost. And these amounts are being given by the government uh, without expectation of financial returns. So we think once the MIF is legislated, uh, we foresee that uh, the future MIC wouldn't be entering into or investing in these types of PPPs, uh, but rather do uh, user fee-based uh, PPP projects instead. And uh, finally, um, we are, the, the PPP Center is thinking that uh, for unsolicited proposals, the participation of the MIF fund should be after the project has been awarded already, after the clearances have been secured, and after a definite project is already, already signed uh, by the government. So those are the five uh, considerations that, that we have seen. Um, and in terms of conceptual models, we offered, based on the current language of the law, we uh, submitted two conceptual models. Uh, where the MIF could participate in a PPP project. So the first one is through investments in stocks of the PPP company. So um, normally in the SPV, uh, uh, it would normally be... Uh, so there are two cases. No? So MIC will invest in the PPP SPV company through equity transactions, either through direct buyout of shares of stock uh, from the original members of the private proponent uh, consortium, or uh, through open market in case of the in case the company has been uh, duly listed. So investments could normally be made either before the project's operation, uh, in which case uh, this is more high risk, high reward scenario because construction risks is still there, demand is not yet there. Um, but another is through uh, during the O&M phase. This is less risky, but of course less uh, less return also. But uh, because the ramp up of the demand is already there, and the construction risk is already uh, has already passed. So we do note that uh, in PPP contracts there would normally be lock up provisions imposed against the original consortium. Uh, and so this should also be observed in w w when MIF gets into the um, PPP contract. And then the second uh, model is um, a stapled financing to a solicited uh, joint venture contract. So here, even before the project uh, gets into the market, the MIF fund is already stapled to the deal. So part of the uh, structure of the project that will be approved is that the government, or the, through the MIF, will have a specific amount that will be uh, a government uh, contribution uh, as equity to the JV company. So these are the two uh, models and the five considerations that we have submitted, uh, Mr. Chair and Your Honors. Thank you. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Uh, very interesting uh, ngayon ko lang din na, na scan ito but uh, thank you for uh, addressing the question uh, based on itong submission ninyo yung, uh, lalo na yung dalawang uh, conceptual uh, models uh, parang napasukan nyo na rin yung second part ng question ko about describing the institutional innovations that will be enabled by the presence of something like a Maharlika Fund. Itatanong ko sana, and you started to address some of these points, yung to describe the limitations of these present modes of project identification, de-risking, and you also started to talk about the risk aspect, co-financing and legal hedging. Can these limitations be illustrated with reference to specific projects that are presently in the pipeline, but either experiencing delays, weak uptake by the private sector? If I may, ma'am, so I, I think I've described some examples on how to de-risk uh -oh. EPP project, even if there is the MIF. But I, I think I'd also like to point out how these uh, would synergize, for instance, to the proposed PPP Act. I think there's uh, recognition that um, in the status quo, the current PPP program, uh, uh, the PPP projects that we have, 
and you know so have some room for improvements which the proposed TPP Act is trying to address. So this Maharlika Investment Fund is actually a welcome addition to the alternative sources of financing uh, to you know a possibility to improve our, our PPP projects as well. So as mentioned earlier, currently uh, we are limited by normally sa, sa current framework natin for PPP projects, ang financing lang manggagaling either uh, equity or debt. So through the MIF, uh, this is an alternative uh, form of financing also that PPP projects could um, use. With, uh, with a good management and uh, institutional setup, I, we think this could also be an opportunity to improve the PPP program. Okay, salamat. Could you describe how these present you know, project identification, the risking, co-financing, legal packaging modes could level up once, if and when there's a Maharlika funding modality, uh, what present constraints will a Maharlika investment fund address? That, at ito related sa isang tanong ko nung unang-unang hearing, no? uh, constraints that the Maharlika could address that cannot be addressed through present mechanisms. Kung bagay yung value added niya kung mayroon. I think, ma'am, the first one uh, as to how Parang projects are are being developed no currently and how uh, the MIF uh, would come in. So in general, PPP projects are identified by the implementing agencies from among their list of priority projects, and then uh, the implementing agencies would work to develop these projects to secure approval. Um, to help them, there's the PPP Center Project Development Team or the pro and the, the Project Development and Monitoring Facility or the PDMF, uh, which we uh, help to uh, Im help implementing agencies in structuring these projects so that they could secure approvals. Now, yung mga uh, government con uh, government undertakings that are embedded into these PPP projects. All of these are being proposed for approval in the uh, Investment Coordination Committee. That's where NEDA is, uh, DOF, uh, ultimately yung NEDA board shared by the president also vets on it. Um, so any, any government undertaking being embedded in a PPP project uh, goes through this uh, vetting um, process. So how will this uh, change uh, later on? Our understanding of uh, the MIF model is that this is actually uh, an extra level of due diligence because the MIF will have its own board and its own vetting whether or not the MIF will be uh, uh, invested to a particular PPP project. Salamat, Mr. Chair. I'm also glad binanggit nyo yung uh, Investment Coordinating Committee ng NEDA kasi... Um, Maingat talaga namin pag-aaralan pa itong novel concepts nyo as presented in the two conceptual models, including these uh, five considerations. So, and speaking of NEDA nga, si SEC Balisakan ba nakita na nila itong mga proposals sa inyong, sa inyong presentation? Uh, perhaps, as far as we know, ma'am, yes, but maybe USEC uh, Edilion. Yes, Mr. Chair, baka pwede pong matanong si USEC Edilion. To pick up this you question. Said you recognized. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, uh, yes, ma'am, na nakita na po. Nag uh, comment na po ba sila tungkol dito? May, may initial feedback po ba sila about this? Yeah, actually, the first submission was to OSEC. <laughs> so, so, nakita na talaga. Uh. All right, salamat po. Um, moving on, Mr. Chair. Actually, uh, if I could. Uh, We've talked a lot about uh, Indonesia Sovereign Wealth Fund, yung INA. So yung pangalawang tanong ko naman, moving from uh, mobilizing domestic capital, how will the Maharlika Fund attract more foreign equity participation? Uh, in the case of Indonesia's INA, I understand that GOCC capital is invested as equity in infrastructure or mineral exploration projects. I also understand that President Jokowi wants to package these GOCC projects as commercial ventures. So, parang bumabalik yung isip ko sa PPPs, no? Kasi similar to the PPP special purpose vehicles. And once packaged as such sa Indonesia, the foreign institutional investors can buy out the GOCC equity. 
Uh, so, medyo iba yung flow nila. So, GOCC equity is then released for use in a new round of projects. The role of INA in such transactions is as a buyer of first resort. So, INA buys the GOCC equity in these projects if foreign investors are not offering or not yet offering a good price for the government asset. So, parang lumalabas refinancing process ito sa Indonesia, foreign investors can offer to replace GOCC equity that was earlier invested in and presently trapped trapped in infrastructure and mineral exploration projects. INA makes sure that the GOCC gets a good price for its infrastructure or mineral exploration asset. And INA also makes sure that even if there is at present only a limited interest in the asset, the GOCC gets to liquidate or sell the asset Ina, if necessary. So, yung uh, next questions ko, Mr. Chair, are yun, comparison and contrast nung kinocontemplate natin sa Maharlika at saka yung sa uh, naranasan naman ng Ina. Is there Philippine GOCC capital presently trapped in infrastructure or mineral exploration projects that we intend to send to sell to foreigners? Kanino? Oh, meron ganun ba? Ah, okay. Could I direct the question, Mr. Chair, to GM Mauricio of the NDC? Uh, you are directed, uh, you are recognized, uh, GM Mauricio. Sorry. Uh, Mr. Chair, can I have a clarification as to the question, please? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, contemplating uh, the Harlika and looking at the experience of INA sa Indonesia, is there Philippine GOCC capital presently trapped in infrastructure or mineral exploration projects o mga katulad that we intend to sell to foreigners? Maybe an example would be uh, useful, Mr. Chair. So in Indonesia, the annual investment in infra and mineral exploration by GOCCs has been at around 12%. GDP of GDP for a number of years now. So there's a lot of equity trapped in OCC, uh, in GOCC projects that Indonesian President Jokowi now wants to liberate with the help of INA and of foreign investors. So this level of GOCC spending in infrastructure and mineral exploration is actually more than double uh, the target of our own ambitious build, build, build program. Uh, and we could bring out more details in subsequent hearings, uh, Mr. Chair. Pero sa ngayon, merong bang katulad na Philippine uh, GOCC uh, investments na nakatrap sa ganong mga big ticket uh, projects na sa pamamagitan ng isang Maharli ka, tingin natin, pwede natin ibenta sa mga foreign investors? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right now, the, the assets... When you say trap, ma'am, that means uh, it's not very liquid. Uh, that you no, know, so so meaning if it's not uh, very liquid, uh, we if you're suggesting that uh, we can package them and sell them off. Uh, Tulad ng ginagawa ng Indonesia. Yes, that's possible, uh, and we do have such. Uh, in fact, in Indonesia itself, we have a an investment with the ASEAN. Uh, in in a company there uh, as regards uh, fertilizer uh, fertilizer yes but it has not uh, gotten off the ground at this point so we're we're, we're cooperating with uh, ASEAN neighbor countries on that and uh, NDC is a shareholder there uh, and there was a capital call and we had ourselves diluted uh, however uh, for example should I speak? For example, our investments in um, the later industrial development estate, uh, it is possible for us to have the NDC properties there uh, uh, collated and valued and uh, perhaps uh, sell it to the highest uh, bidder in order to liquidate it. Uh, that is possible. And, and there are several other NDC properties. So I would assume that the National Treasury has uh, multiple of these uh, uh, kinds of properties that they can identify. And, uh, you know, uh, similar to the concept of a REIT, except that there is no uh, revenue stream at the moment. 
because REITs have a continuous revenue stream, but but uh, the concept is sound and that is uh, certainly uh, possible for uh, for any fund. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Although nakita kong umiti nga si National Treasurer De Leon, pero talagang ma'am, kayo po yung susunod na tatanin ko. Meron po bang ganong klase ng mga uh, malalaking bulto ng kapital, ng gobyerno, which are currently uh, nakapirme dun sa ganyang mga big ticket projects na sa konteksto na magkaroon na ng Maharlika, we are contemplating to to sell to foreign investors. Uh ma'am uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So um because we have the asset registry right now sa treasury po. So we have also yung inventory of the financial and non-financial assets that were turned over to the government coming from the CB ball, coming from the AMLAC, uh ombudsman. So yun po uh, so these are also being consolidated and we're also turning it over to the privatization and ma management office ng Department of Finance for disposition. But otherwise, like for, for some big parcels of land, they can also be consolidated, not necessarily uh to sell, but maybe that would also be our um share or that would be our contribution to any joint venture. Um the land would be our equity uh, participation in some possible projects. So, pwede rin pong ganong mga uh, structures that can also be developed. So, not necessarily and confined only to uh, to the sale. Kasi there would also be upside later on that we can also um, be uh, generating. Salamat, ma'am. Mr. Chair, could, uh, at mamaya, matanong ko rin yung Asset Privatization Trust, pero can DOF or NEDA give us a complete enumeration of GOCCs that already intend or are contemplating kapag nailunsad na yung Maharlika, intend, that intend to spin off uh, special purpose vehicles for projects that already have some predictable cash flows that could attract foreign financing. Uh, kasi since parang top of mind natin ang INA, isa siyang best practice model na tinitingnan natin. So pwedeng matanong na, is there a lot of it to warrant the creation of something similar to Indonesia's INA? Should I ask Music Abenoha, Mr. Chair? Uh, I think, uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Madam Senator. Now we will prepare such a list. Um, in the earlier submission to the Chair, Madam Senator, we identified uh, certain assets uh, that can be uh, sold by the national government or, as mentioned by the Treasurer, uh, could form as an equity contribution uh, by the uh, MWF in uh, future ventures with, uh, with private investors, either domestic or, or foreign. And the, the list... Uh, would cover um, certain categories, for example, uh, uh, it, should, it could be real estate, some firms uh, that are engaged in mining or manufacturing, and uh, property development, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Right. Thank you. Salamat, uh, Mr. Chair. Just a last question on this topic. Meron po bang uh, GCG report or report ng Asset Privatization Trust that describes a programmatic plan to package and liquidate uh, such GOCC assets tulad ng nililista ng uh, DOF? At may plano ba, again, tulad ng Indonesia, to utilize this GOCC equity, so not private equity, uh, thus freed up to initiate or construct priority infrastructure projects? Andito po ba ang GCG? Is GCG here, Mr. GCG Chair? representative, uh, Secretariat? Uh, can we uh, ask the GCG representative to comment? Uh, good afternoon po, um, Mr. Chair. Yes, please proceed. Yes, um, as to the uh, list of GOCCs, uh, ang, uh, as an oversight uh, body po, we give uh, operational flexibility to the um, GOCCs. And on that matter, po, we uh, recognize the uh, charter. And uh, as far as the charter of the GOCC can allow them, uh, Your Honor. Can allow them to what, sir? 
Uh, on the matter po of uh, investment, it is yeah. the charter of the GOCC that will uh, um, allow them to do that, uh, Your Honor. Pero sir, meron na po ba kayong uh, report prog ng isang programmatic plan para i-package at i-liquidate certain of these GOCC assets sa konteksto ng paglulunsad ng isang Maharlika? Ay, at, at the moment po, wala pa po kaming ganong um, uh, programa at pag-aaral po. All right. Baka for your consideration, sir, for the consideration of the commission at saka plano paano gamitin yung GOCC equity na yan uh, para mag-initiate, mag-construct ng mga priority infrastructure projects. Salamat, Opo. Mr. Chair. Amin pong gagawin po yan, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Salamat po. Mr. Chair, do I still have time or should I wait for a second round? Uh, Senator JV, do you have any, would you like to... Uh, Okay. Uh, you can finish your line of question, and Senator JV is uh, willing to wait. Salamat, Mr. Chair. I actually have just one more question and then one manifestation, unless Sam Gachalan would like to take a second round first. Um, actually, I was going to ask about the uh, um, the BSP. I think that's a good point, and that's a, a, a sticking point to this uh, proposal. And uh, based on the information that uh, we got last time, uh, and because uh, BSP will be foregoing the capital buildup through dividends, the normal, if, correct me if I'm wrong, huh, but this, this is what I got, the normal seven-year buildup will now take 14 years to build up. Is that correct, Paul? Um, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, we did a simulation um, using the uh, income that we generated 2019 to 2021 and average it uh, just for uh, purposes of uh, calculating how long it will take for the BSP to uh, fill up the uh, balance in our capitalization. Um, if we are going to contribute uh, based on the proposal of two years, 100% uh, of the dividends, and then 50% of the dividends thereafter, it will take the BSP 17 years to be fully paid of its, uh, of its uh, capitalization. But without, like, <laughs> the baseline is that um, if there is no uh, proposal like this, it will take the BSP uh, around eight years for us to fill up our capitalization. So the delay would be 17 years. So there will be a, uh, a um, nine-year delay? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. And uh, I, I mentioned this during the last hearing. We were made to understand when we were discussing this bill that the uh, size of the banking industry has already uh, um, outsized the capital of the uh, BSP. So by delaying it by another nine years, obviously uh, the size of the banking industry will be much, much bigger compared to the capitalization of BSP. So. I don't have the numbers right now, no. but uh, can you explain to us why BSP is willing to forego nine years of its capitalization build-up, uh, considering that the argument in the past was, uh, and let me just quote again, uh, that the economy is 11.3 times bigger compared to um, 1993, and the banking system is 12.2 times bigger. Um, what uh, calculations have you done no, to make you agree to forego your capital buildup uh, by about uh, nine years? And what safeguards uh, do we have uh, to protect our banking industry other than the, I think the the shocks is another issue, no? but the banking industry, which is an ongoing concern, uh, and we were made to understand that it's already a, a size that uh, beyond the capitalization of BSP. Uh, can you show us um, some of your um, thought process on uh, how to manage a banking industry of this size, let alone after 17, 17 years? 
Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we do recognize the uh, power of the purse of Congress. Uh, what we are contributing would be the dividends. But of course, under the amended uh, charter, under uh, RA number 11211, that dividend should revert back to the BSP as part of capitalization. But as I said, we recognize the power of the purse of the Congress. So it can decide on whether to plow it back to us or to use it as part of the uh, MIF contribution. Now, um, we, when we did the, re the representation at that time, um, we cited the fact that the Philippine economy has expanded, has grown, and the financial system has also expanded. And that requires uh, additional equity uh, on the part or additional capitalization on the part of the BSB. But at the same time, um, we also, um, well, thankfully, the Congress has approved our ability to issue our own instrument. And that supplemented our ability to conduct our mandate or to proceed with our mandate. Um, the, the draft proposal calls for a 17-year period for us to contribute. But of course, um, we recognize the wisdom of Congress to put certain um, safety nets in the event that in the future there will be um, uh, unexpected crises similar to what we experienced in the past, like for instance, um, in 2010 and 2015, at the time that we incurred a lot of losses. So um, we cannot predict whether there will be crisis in the future, but we leave it to the wisdom of Congress to provide safety nets. Uh, like for instance, in the event that there will be crisis, probably there will be some suspension of the BSP contributing to the fund. So that's. Is that a suggestion, ma'am? It is a suggestion, <laughs> Mr. Chair. Are you trying Mr. to hint? Mr. Chair, because hint? <laughs> it is a suggestion, actually. Uh -huh. It is a suggestion because um, we know that, you know, external events um, would have impact on the Philippine economy. And we cannot predict the extent by which it can affect us and the BSP has to be there to make sure that we provide the appropriate environment. Um, so given the fact that it will take 17 years for us to be able to um, fill up the uh, required um, capitalization, we leave it to Congress. Well, you know, Madam, uh, uh, it's within, within the hours of Congress, no? but we want to make sure that we're exercising it uh, in a way that is prudent and uh, the best possible for the banking industry. Uh, we recognize that the BSP is the regulator of the banking industry. Uh, it also provides uh, price stability, inflation fighting, as well as currency stability. So it's doing many things. No? Uh, but uh, what I am quite concerned with is the uh ability of BSP to respond uh, during times of um, uh, banking challenges no and we cannot uh, we cannot isolate that that's why when I was reviewing the transcript uh, the size of the banking industry was the compelling reason why we need to build up the capitalization of BSP now delaying it for almost two decades, no, dalawang almost twenty seventeen is almost twenty years. No, uh, doesn't give us, at least me. No, doesn't give me the confidence that nothing bad will happen in the next seventeen years. Anything can happen in in the next seventeen years, um, and uh, the the sooner we can build up the capitalization of BSP, the better for all of us. We can see, sleep soundly at night. But how can we sleep soundly in the next seventeen years? That knowing that it you know, things can happen you know, and our regulator cannot respond. So moving forward, uh, we acknowledge that we have that 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 power to add, but we need to exercise it with diligence. No, and uh, it's important you provide us with information so that hindi usun tok sa buwan yung gagawin ho natin. So my my just to move forward, um, Mr. Chair is. Uh, 
give us some simulation or maybe during the next hearing to to uh, demonstrate to us that for the next 17 years and with 50, 50 billion in capitalization, uh, demonstrate to us that in an event that there is trouble no, in the banking system, there is, let's say, uh, a currency, no, we cannot discount that, that happened in 1997. Are we ready to face all of those challenges? Um, demonstrate to us that at the worst event, uh, the BSP is ready to fight those um, challenges with a 50 billion capitalization. No? Kasi maliit talagang capital. I'm, I'm looking at your balance sheet right now. It, it's really quite small. No? And the instruments that you mentioned are all debt instruments also. Meaning mag issue kayo, utang kayo, babayaran nyo rin yun at one point. So just imagine, you're being attacked but you're also... You also you're also mandated to return all of those instruments at one point, no? So you're squeezing yourself to the wall, no? So ibaho yung equity because equity that's part of the mandate of BSP. So just just on the next hearing, Mr. Chair, just give us the worst case scenario and how BSP can respond to those worst case scenario, considering that we are delaying the capitalization of the BSP. Thank you. We will be having, uh, after this, we will have our technical working group so we can discuss, you can discuss those at length after this. Okay. <laughs> Next, Mr. Chairman, just to add dun sa line of questioning ni Senator Gachalian, with your permission. Um, Ms. Sikat, kasi nung lumapit kayo sa amin to amend your, yung BSP, sabi niya ganito yung scenario why you need to build up capital. Nawala na ba yung ganong scenario? If you, um, Mr. Chair, if you look at the uh, financial standing of the BSP, wala na po yung net losses. I mean, annual net losses. Uh, we posted uh, net income from 2019 to 2021. And we believe, based on uh, initial uh, calculations, 2022, positive pa rin po kami. So what cost yung net losses you? Um during the time ng 2012 po hanggang 2016 meron po kasi parang um paper tantrum similar to what happened recently wherein you know advanced economies were tightening their uh financial condition and therefore um we need to raise interest rates. We need to defend our, our uh, currency in order to um, stabilize volatilities in the market. So we need to intervene po, and that cost us. So my losses po kami doon. But today, today, um, 2019 to 2022, naka-recover na po kami. We were able to recover some of our losses. Because we can now issue our own instrument. And nakatulong ba dun sa pag-recover nyo yung ability nyo to increase your capitalization? Kasi po, we cannot infinitely um, issue uh, our own instruments that has to be backed up by something. And increasing our capitalization would provide the support. You increase, you increase capitalization nyo. Nakatulong ba yun? Hindi pa po kami... Um, pa pa kayo, wala pa kayo nakukuha? Nakakuha po kami 10 billion in last year. Last year po. So yung 50, from the time we made the representation, 60 po na siya uh, last year. Hindi yun nakatulong yung 60 na yun? Kahit pa paano? That provided confidence to the market that we can support the additional uh, instruments that we issue to the market. And would... Your, yung, hindi madedelay yung um, capitalization nyo, hindi ba mawawala yung um, confidence ng market? Kasi sabi mo, because of that, yes. it added confidence. Eh, mawawala na nga sa inyo yun eh. Uh, to the extent that uh, our liability is more than we can support. I mean, equity can support. And other uh, at the moment, the at the moment, pwede pa you, po. Pwede so, pa. the proposal in the draft is two years 
100% two years. But on the third year and onward, 50% na lang po. So 50% will plow back to the BSP. So that would be able to add to the equity. Pero yung two years po. Pero kung yung scenario na makakahanap ng ibang source of funding at hindi nakasama yung BSP, would you prefer that? Kung hindi na po sasama ang BSP. Kunyari, makakahanap kami ng ibang funding source. Would you prefer na wag na lang kayo isa? The, ide the ideal scenario, Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honor, is that um, the dividends of the BSP will plow back to the BSP. The ideal scenario. Oh, in short, nga, kunyari, in short, mas gusto niyo na makuha niya na lang ulit yung dividends niyo. Mr. Chair, can I ask? Yeah, can, can we ask my? Uh, uh, can we may perhaps uh, see Senator JV has been very uh, patient. I think we should give him the opportunity to ask a question first. So, I, is it if with the indulgence of the committee, if we can? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Then I'll just have one last. Yeah, question. Yeah, sure, sure. So, uh, yeah, Senator JV. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I don't know about just uh, three points, no. Uh, since I was not able to attend the the two hearings because of a. Uh, simultaneous hearings as well that I was chairing. So anybody from the economic team can I would like can answer. Do po sa section 13 yung sa allowable investments. No? Andito po, nakalagay, subject to strict compliance with investment risk management guidelines, the board of directors of the MIC shall authorize the following investments, cash, foreign currencies, metals, and other tradable commodities, fixed income instruments, issued by sovereign, quasi-sovereign, supranationals, hanggang nakaiyuri po, hanggang joint venture or co-investments. No? Uh, anyway, it's there. Anong ko lang, what, what would make the MIF unique? Um, which among the allowable investments mentioned in Section 13 is not yet being performed by the funding sources? Doon po sa naka-enumerate. Iba halos lahat naman. Yung iba yun naman dito, karamihan ginagawa na rin ng mga funding sources natin. Anybody can answer po? Para lang... Anybody from the economic team? Um, siguro si Treasurer, pwede rin na. Si Treasurer or Yusek. Uh, your... Yun lang, what makes it unique from... Kasi itong mga level investments are being done also by other GFIs and uh, what makes it unique para lang for me. Yeah. Uh, th thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator, for that question. So all of these uh, allowable investments are uh, the usual menu of uh, investment uh, destinations that uh, investors, even uh, government uh, GFIs or GOCCs, some GOCCs can invest in. But what is important, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, in the philosophy of the MWF, what we are trying to do really is to uh, focus the investments of the government into strategic uh, destinations. Uh, but at the same time, they will be at a commercial rate or with, with acceptable or even higher than market returns. So this is what is uh, being uh, attempted Mr. Chair, through this, uh, th through this vehicle. Another important consideration, Mr. Chair, is that uh, these uh, investments, at least on the side of the joint ventures, the projects, they are guided by the priorities as uh, embedded by the PDP. Um, the, the focus really will be on those projects that have gone through uh, the vetting process by, uh, the, by the NEDA and the ICC. Uh, so we will make sure that these investments are compliant or are consistent with the uh, medium-term goals of this uh, administration. So I think that that will be the, that is the um, major uh, consideration, consideration in forming this particular vehicle. Okay, thank you, uh, you said, thank you, sir. So you go back to you know, see General Manager Antonio. Antonino Mauricio. So NDC, since uh, and I, uh, the market investment funds aim is investments, no? uh, joint ventures and management of funds. 
I would like to know MDC's, MDC's uh, investment portfolio kasi kumbaga parang ito na rin yung ano eh, there's a similarity but I'll bet on a smaller scale um, of your investments through the years through to the decades what are the notable um, investments or uh, ventures that uh, were successful para lang alam din natin kasi I mean on a smaller scale parang ganito na rin yung your intention of Mahalika Fund. So we just like to know the success rate of, um, of going into investments, development, joint ventures, and um, itong management. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Senator. Um, we, off the top of my head, because there's, uh, as, as we... As we, um, hi there, it's in the slide. We we uh, completed, uh, we invested in seven, 117 companies, most of them engineering uh, projects. So if if I can go to projects and investment one slide. Marami kasi, Senator. Yeah, so no, the, uh, moving forward, please, next slide. Next slide. So uh, just go to the projects and investments. One, I will uh, announce we created the first light bulbs, the first cement firm, first textile firm, first sugar refinery, first space communications company, uh, one of the first low-cost housing projects, agricultural plantations, that's Doral and Del Monte, funding for shop owners and shoemakers, rice for domestic consumption, warehouses for rice, copra, tobacco, lumber and paper mills, Instrumental in the National Steel Corporation as well. Revival of the pre-war food cannery, five-story concrete warehousing in the South Harbor, pineapple production, amaca chips as raw material for long-fibered pulp, national shipbuilding, copper plant, phosphatic fertilizer plant. Um, we have a euphorbia as an alternative source of energy fuel, groundbreaking surveys of oil, iron, ore, guano, marble, coal, and other minerals, rattan plantation, cotton growing, fish pond scanning of fruits and vegetables, ceramic sanity wares, plants, expansion of the Philippine merchant marine industry, urea fertilizer in Negros, synthetic fiber plant for clothing, laterite ores. I'm sorry to cut, you know. Anyway, you just yes. submitted the committee. Yes, I'd just like to know, uh, what would what would you say? Ano ano masasabi mo of your investments, or your ventures that NDC has gone through the decades? Ilan kaya yung percentage na successful tayo, or yung mga sabi hindi malat successful yan eh, di ba? So yun lang po siguro. You can submit to the committee so that you know this will also help us, no? Uh, appreciate how investments and joint ventures and uh, and uh, uh, others that mahalika investment fund would would be uh, is the intended to do para lang malaman din namin Ms. Ms. Mr. Chair Senator if I may speak candidly if you are trying to compare the investment of the government with the NDC with the proposed Maharlika fund I think it's comparing apples and oranges what happened with NDC is that we we are mandated to take risks not uh, not more, uh, not palatable to the private by the private sector to take. That means, by definition, NDC involves itself for development of the country in high-risk projects. Given that, we cannot. It is anathema for us to be expected to make a very profitable operation, given that we're directed to develop industries. Second, when we do develop industries, if it becomes successful, Senator, uh, Mr. Chair. We turn it over to the private sector. Um, and somebody coming from the private sector, it's actually a, a lot of them are at the expense of the government. No? We turn it over to the private sector if it is successful, and we absorb it if it's not successful. So we are we, we are leading with distressed assets as NDC. So that's that's I mean to speak candidly, that is not how we see the Maharlika fund as envisioned. So, uh, so just to uh, what I mean, what I meant was, for example, you went into your joint ventures in uh, putting up uh, projects like industrial parks, now which were you know yes, sir. intended to uh, create growth areas and stimulate economic growth yes, in areas. 
Siguro yung mga ganun projects, that's what I meant. As to the success rate of these kinds of projects, that were really meant in really uh, stimulating economic growth. That's what MIF was really uh, intended to be. Yes, sir. For example, sir, actually, the NDC started the pineapple plantations in Mindanao. Uh, that's one very successful one. It's now taken over by the private sector, but it's still very successful. Uh, we were also instrumental in the formation of Semirara, uh, which is now one of the most profitable companies in the Philippines listed. Uh, the first Cavite industrial estate uh, has been fully turned over. It's the first industrial estate, and it continues to uh, be successful. The um, Asar and Philfos are our partners in uh, Leyte, and that continues to be profitable and successful and has helped the town of Isabel in Leyte uh, very well. So those are just a few of the examples that the uh, NDC uh, history can show that it has uh, entered into projects and managed them well, uh, Mr. Chair, Senator. But thank you for that, uh, GM, because that's what I really was want, I wanted to hear. Because uh, we intend, I think, uh, MIF's, one of the aims of MIF is to... Uh, and the interventions that would really um, create jobs and opportunities so by stimulating economic growth, creating growth areas, you no know, growth developments. So we'd like to, you know, thank you for for that. Now, my last, last, um, my last concern, Mr. Chair, is uh, personal and probably parochial to me. So, Pagkor, po, siguro, si anybody from Pagkor can answer. Um, According to the Pagco and other government-owned gaming operators shall contribute at least 10% no, of gross gaming revenue streams. So, meron ba kayong estimate uh, how much is the 10% of the gross gaming industry? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, if, for example, we will take our income for, from 2021, uh, the ten, the, our income from gaming operation is um, 32 billion. So, the 10% would be 3.2 billion. And uh, as we propose, Your Honor, uh, we are proposing or suggesting that that be taken from the 50% government share because that is the biggest chunk of our uh, income. And also, Mr. Chair, that would also address the other issues discussed in the previous hearings regarding the return on investment, whether PAGCOR should be a member of the board because that particular fund, that 50% government share, it's really a fund that is under the law to be remitted to government. So wala na ho sa amin yung issue na kailangan pa ba kaming maging member ng board or magkaroon ng return on investment. Uh, it, it, the law, PDS 1869, made it really convenient for us to provide funding for government projects. What is only needed is the appropriations from government. For example, you know, inappropriate in yung universal health care and then we have a new appropriation, a new obligation, which is 10 billion aggregate in five years for the Philippine Space Agency Fund. So yun po ang aming commitment for the next five years. Indefinite po yung universal health care. Kaya nga po meron din kaming proposal na to limit the funding to the Maharlika for five years so that we can sustain our other funding obligations and future funding obligations. Because right now, there are four bills pending in Congress na hinihingi rin po yung funding namin. The reason I ask, Mr. Chair, is that I know for a fact that uh, PAGCOR's funds, no, uh, marami ng earmarked dito. Uh, in, marami pang ini-intend yes, to be earmarked. Yes, so, as you mentioned, siyempre po, as the principal sponsor and author of the Universal Health Care Law, um, siyempre, I'm concerned also, this might affect Yung pang mga earmark, probably this one also, na kung mapupunta sa Mahalika, uh, will this affect the funding for my um, universal healthcare? Because it's a work in progress. And I would say that um, the success of uh, an administration, makakita rin natin if the healthcare system is successful. No? Do not make it if it's really sensitive to improving the lives and the quality of lives for our people. So, yun lang po, uh, attorney, uh, with this, hindi naman kaya mapekto ang yung funding for the UHC with this added uh, earmarking. Uh, hindi po naman po, Mr. Chair. Uh, again, taking off from our 2021 income, which is one of the weaker years because of the pandemic. Halimbawa po, um, ang magiging government share ay, ang naging government share is 12 point, uh, 36 billion. 
government siya. Ah, hindi, hindi pala. Uh, it's 15.4 billion. So half of that would be earmarked for uh, universal health care. Kung magkakaroon po ng 10% pa of our gaming operations for Maharlika, 10% would be 3 point, only 3.2 billion. So kaya pa po from the 15 billion. Uh, even with the 2 billion yearly for the next 5 years from for the Philippine Space Agency Fund, kaya pa rin po. And we are expecting na lalaki naman po yung with the return of the our tourists, our ano, lalaki naman ulit yung ating uh, uh, income, uh, annual income. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, ang naging concern kasi nakita ko yan eh, yung, yung uh, subsidy, no? yung uh, earmark, may subsidy to LGUs, contribute to social civic projects, Philippine sports program, ngayon may space program pa, so renewable energy. So, yun lang po yung concern ko. I hope that uh, the UHC fund, of course, it's one of the landmark uh, legislation and priority of this of any administration should be. Uh, I hope it doesn't be, it doesn't be affect, it, it would not be affected. Mr. Chair, actually, sa lahat po ng hearing na may funding uh, proposal, lagi po namin minimension talaga universal health care. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's all for now. Chair? Um, just a continuation then sa line. Yes, sir. Please, Senator Binay, continue. Okay, ano, when you say na naka-earmark, nabigay niya ba talaga yung kalahat eh? Uh, Mr. Chair, yun pong kalahat, yun pong fund would be released by the Bureau of Treasury. Hindi na ho kami ang nagre-release. Uh, so, na yung kalahat eh, for, for example, universal health care, na na-release niya na yung 50%. Ay, Mike po. Funds na na-remit naman po, automatic kasi po it's already under the, the law. Ah, so we have so pag, to provide. So yung for universal health, nabigay na yung kalahat eh. Monthly, uh, ang, so ang, DOH. Ang, hindi ko po alam kasi hindi na po kami ang nagre-release noon eh. We just... Or, basta binigay po nila sa amin, then we will have to release it po dun sa for the universal health care program po ng uh, Phil Health. So, na-release nyo na yung oh, kalahat eh yeah. to oh, DBM? No, hindi um basta ang DBM po magbibigay sa amin ng notice of cash allocation. Pero usually kasi si DBM parang hindi rin naman niya sinasabi na yung 50% mapupunta sa universal health care, di ba? They always put a cap. Tama ba DBM? Like yung sinasabi nila, nagremit sila ng 7 billion. Yung 7 billion ba nagkaroon ng allocation yung DOH ng additional 7 billion? USEC, somebody from DBM can please answer. You're recognized. Ah, uh, Madam Chair, um, uh, Mr. Chair, it has to be appropriated still. So the fifty percent nasa nep na siya. So uh, we submitted to Congress the fifty percent. But I understand the intent here is. Uh, doon siya sa share ng government ng NG such that the portion uh, attributed to the UHC will not be impaired. Oo nga. So parang nandun lang pero hanggang di siya na-appropriate. Nandun lang siya sa, nasa treasury lang. Sige. So doon sa iba pang ano nyo, um, for example, yung 5% of gross earnings. Na-remit niya na rin yung buong 5%? Yes. Uh, maybe that's the franchise tax, Your Honor. We are remitting that to BIR. Okay. Kasi di ba, um, katulad nung na-mention during the briefing, um, parang lumabas dun sa budget deliberation. For example, yung PSC, parang hindi pala nila nakukuha yung supposed to be allocation nila. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, regarding the PSC, uh, sorry, Mr. Chair, Madam uh, Senator, regarding the PSC, there is a pending Supreme Court case regarding that matter because during the during the time of uh, president ramos when there was a energy crisis a law was passed i think it's a uh, uh, amending the spending or the use of pagcor funds so naging priority po yung spending or yung support ng pagcor sa department of energy yun pong supposedly position or yung provision exactly the same provision ng psc 
yun ang ipinasok na provision for the Department of Energy na support ng fund ng PAGCOR. So nagkaroon ng uh, interpretation noon ang Office of the President na na-revise yung obligation ng PAGCOR with the new priority on energy, yung suporta sa energy noong energy crisis. So ang naging interpretation so, so, ng ayun, Office of the President... yung bigay niyo for energy. Uh, natapos na po yun, but yun nga po, with the... Kaya nga po, nasa Supreme Court yun, whether the law na nag, uh, nag-oblige sa amin to fund uh, the Department of Energy amended or changed yung position ng PSC. Because the two provisions of the law cannot stand together. So yun nga, kaya kung medyo complicated, I, I wouldn't want to... to so yung comment. pera, nasan yung pera? Naka-ano ano pa siya? Naka-ano ba tawag doon? Uh, Special fund? Uh, your Honor, Until the case will get resolved by the Supreme Hindi Supreme po, Your Honor. Nagre-remit kami based on the application or the uh, the position of the Office of the President at that time. Na ang PSC share ay kinukuha namin after we deduct the 50% government share. Itong sa Philippine Space Act, I'm sure hindi nyo, hindi nyo pa napapondohan itong 10 billion. Uh, Ano po yan? Actually, Your Honor, kasama po yan doon sa 50% government share. Doon po yan kukunin. So, it's also a matter of releasing the fund to the agency. Wait, so lahat itong 10, 10 items, this is deducted from the 50% share? I, hindi naman po, Your Honor. Meron po dyan na dinideduct from the net. Uh, tulad po nung dividends, yung under the dividends law, sa net po yun, the Board of Claims and the Dangerous Drugs Board. Yung number eight, ano yung, ano yung Dangerous Drugs Boards? Uh, nagbibigay po kami ng pondo dun sa ating Dangerous Drugs Boards monthly. Magkano ho yun? Direct limitasyon please. Wait, wait, wait. Dangerous Drugs Board, deducted from 50% government share. Yung Dangerous Drugs Board po ay dun din pala sa, ano, sa 50% government share. So, ano lang ho yung hindi part ng 50% government share? Yun pong PSC, ano ba? Yes. Board of Claims, sports benefit yun pong sports benefit incentive, at saka po yung aming, ano, uh, our own initiative na mga corporate social responsibility, yung po aming ginagamit pag may mga bagyo, May mga lindol. So sa amin po talagang budget yung kinukuha. Hindi po namin kinukuha sa government share yun. And with the Maharlika Fund, ano magiging epekto dun sa PSC, Board of Claims? Uh, wala nga po. Gawa nang doon namin yun ipinasok sa 50% government share. So nakahiwalay na po yun. And then para meron kayong proposal... To include APECO, CESA, yes. and P PCSO. Uh, Your Honor, uh, the original provision says that and other government uh, gaming operators. So, ipinropose lang po namin yun to avoid any doubt para maging clear. Kasi yun naman po, existing na silang government uh, gaming operators. So, naglagay lang kami ng mga specific agencies na... Nandun sa general term. And then, idinagdag namin yung general term to catch all the, siguro, mga future agencies. Because right now, I was in a hearing sa House, meron pong siguro mga apat na economic zones na pinupropose na magkakaroon sila ng sariling gaming licensing on their own. Hindi po kasama ang pagkor. Yeah, pero di ba yung APEC, for example, APECO, hindi ba nagre-remit? Hindi ba parang binibigay din naman nila yung kita nila sa inyo? Hindi po, hindi po. Hindi po. Separate po yan. Meron silang sariling authority to license and to regulate and operate their own gaming inside their own economic zone. Pero hindi ba dapat bahagi din sila ng mandato niyo? Uh, ganun po yung naging batas noong time na yon. Nagkaroon sila ng separate ano, charter. Part of their charter. Ano Are you agreeable to this proposal? Ma'am, maybe study the proposal first of PAGCOR. Okay. Thank you. Senator, you're recognized. Salamat, Mr. Chair. One last question. 
uh, sa DOF and then one last motion to the to the chair. Very quick, one quick observation lang dun sa inputs ng PAGCOR. Yung PAGCOR uh, mag-aambag dun sa Maharlika for five years. Pero yung BSP kakayaning magintay ng 17 years bago mag-fully capitalize. Parang makakaingit naman ang PAGCOR. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Chair, yung huling tanong ko po. Uh, in recent news reports, DOF Secretary Jokno said uh, if you exclude BSP, Land Bank, and DBP, where will we source it? And this was apparently a response to points raised by resource persons that the committee heard during our second hearing. Pero kalagit na anong Enero, uh, Sec Jokno was also quoted in media saying that mining revenues should be used to capitalize a Maharlika Wealth Fund. And that would be an answer that uh, the Secretary will probably not disagree with. So we just need some information. What is the Executive's revenue mobilization plan for the mining sector in terms of yearly revenues? And what will be the aspired revenue in 2024, 2025, and 2026, Mr. Chair? You recognize? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, in terms of the funding for the MWF, uh, a possible source will indeed be the revenues coming from the extractive industries. Uh, however, they may not be available immediately, given that the fiscal regime over the sector uh, is still being studied right now. Uh, uh, a proposal is pending in, in, in uh, Congress on the uh, mining fiscal regime. But uh, based on uh, recent uh, performance of the industry, uh, we can have some estimates probably of uh, revenues uh, that can be used by the national government. Uh, for example, for the existing collection from mining industry, right now the estimate is, the, uh, is that the annual revenue could amount to more than 38 uh, billion pesos. Uh, there could be some incremental revenues uh, depending on the proposed, on the design of the uh, proposed mining fiscal regime. Some estimates, for example, if we look at the revenues coming from the metallic mines, uh, another an additional revenue of 9 billion uh, can be generated annually. Uh, but this is for the metallic mines. There are also proposals to uh, include non-metallic uh, segment of the sector. Uh, the range of revenue, additional revenues that could be raised would be about uh, more than 200 million to as much as uh, three and a half billion pesos. Uh, so th these are some of the numbers that have been uh, uh, initially estimated, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Madam Senator. Marami salamat, Mr. Chair. And salamat din, Yusek, for mentioning the pending legislation here in Congress. And in fact, bukod dun, merong ding long-time pending uh, case sa Korte Suprema to amend precisely the fiscal regime para bigyan ng mas malalaking shares compared lalo na sa foreign companies. Bigyan ng mas malalaking shares yung mga local government units, mga mining affected communities at saka mga indigenous peoples kung saan ang uh, kung sa kung kaninong mga ancestral domains naka-locate yung pinaka-highly mineralized na lupain natin dito sa uh, Pilipinas. So, uh, since nabanggit na rin po na pag-usapan na rin natin, uh, ano po yung status ng uh, administration mining tax proposal na pinasa nung Agosto pa sa committee level? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I don't have, unfortunately, Madam Senator, I don't have the update here. But uh, if I recall, uh, from the side of the government, we have already provided uh, all the inputs that were requested uh, of the government side. That's right, Yusek. Na provide na ng executive lahat ng inputs. Pero uh, totoo ba na uh, sa House, kung saan may mga key proponents din naman ng Maharlika, Hindi pa nagkakaroon ng plenary deliberations 
uh, on the new mining fiscal regime mula nung maaprubahan ito sa committee level five months ago na almost half a year ago. So ano pong nangyayari doon? Uh, Mr. Chair, Madam, Madam Senator, unfortunately I'm not familiar at this time. Uh, we can get back to you on that. I'm so glad the Secretary say, can uh, find out for the Senator what the status is in the House of Representatives of the... Madam Salamat, Mr. Chair. So lastly, my uh, my request uh, to the Chair, since we're trying to explore different points of view that the committee and our economic managers uh, may hold, and since we are not yet about to terminate the hearings, may I respectfully move, Mr. Chair, to request the committee to invite uh, the two additional resource persons or organization, one, the Bankers Association of the Philippines, and secondly, the Action for Economic uh, Reforms. Uh, sorry, I, I think the Bankers Association, Association of the Philippines is now. If you'd like to, if you'd like to, if you have some questions for them, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was hoping kasi po that the BAP uh, could weigh in on the arguments we heard during the second uh, committee hearing, uh, specifically on the possible effects on the financial system if BSP, DBP, and Land Bank were to become the sources of funding for a Maharlika fund. Um, I think, Mr. Chair, the committee may also benefit from the BAP's comment on the proposition from one of their members who told me that a Maharlika fund will only undermine the glide back to a more manageable level of indebtedness projected in government's own medium-term fiscal framework. So, Mr. Chair, if they could be recognized... Thank you. Uh, at this point, we'd like to recognize Mr. Uh, Tony Moncupa from the, the BAP. Uh, you're recognized, sir. Oh. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Your Honors. I'm Antonio Mancupa, the president of the Bankers Association of the Philippines. Yeah, uh, you know, our position paper commented on the proposal to include the BAP in the advisory board. Now, of course, we're hearing comments from our members. And I tell you, the, 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 the bankers have displayed comments on this uh, on this pending bill in in, in Congress or in, in the Senate. Now, I think one of the comments is that all the current contribution now coming from the the, the central bank, maybe even Pancor, have been generally part of the general fund. So what 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 I think what people are saying is that if it goes to the social, uh, to the sovereign wealth fund, or the, to the Maharlika fund, it will mean that uh, it will mean that you know, that the uh, either the government will be short of the funds that otherwise would have gone to the general fund, or maybe the budget would need to be cut if the deficit is to be maintained by way of cutting social services because uh, right now it's, it's 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 been part of and parcel of that now including the that of the of the central bank i think that's what the good senator was uh, commenting earlier and it was also a concern being pursued by SNB9 just recently with pagcor Yes, sir. And uh, if you have uh, additional comments specific to yung isang comment I heard from a BAP leader na kapag ka magkaroon na nga itong maharli ka, parang ma-interrupt ma yung sabi niya glide back to a manageable level of indebtedness. Yeah, of course, uh, I'm Senator, of course, when the deficit grows bigger, then it... Uh, it's not good for the country because eventually uh, the proportion of debt service becomes bigger relative to the social services which the government is supposed to provide. So anything that enlarges the deficit, uh, that, that, that is not turned into a productive use by way of increasing the output, the national output, will be negative for future development of the country. So if if we if, if the funds like uh, uh, that will go otherwise the general fund is is now will now be put in the sovereign wealth fund, the eventual effect would either be that either we increase the deficit or we cut the, the services. 
of the of the government. Sir, ang projection po ninyo kapag nailunsad yung Maharlika, it will actually be the be deficit creating or deficit um, worsening and lead to uh, cuts in uh, social protection spending uh, of our country, of our government? Mr. Chairman, actually it depends on where the funds will be coming from. If the funds will be coming from sources that otherwise would have gone to the general fund, and if you go into the general fund, of course, the impact would be, as mentioned. Now, if there will be funds coming from other sources, which is not part of the government funding at present, then it, it would not cause a deficit to expand. I think that was also the, in the last session what was mentioned by uh, Mr. Kalistov Chim Kyanko, that the funds be coming from other sources. Mm. So, intimately linked yung dalawang punto nyo. So, um, it, it would seem na yung advice sa komite namin based sa inputs nyo ni Mr. Chikiamko would really be to explore more of the alternative sources of funding uh, for a Maharlika. Baka kasama na yung uh, maibubunga nung ano, pag, kung naipasa na yung bagong batas tungkol sa fiscal regime sa mining. Okay. Maraming salamat, uh, Mr. Mongkupa. Uh, oh, sorry. One last follow-up, sir. There's a plan to hire foreign experts to manage the fund. Kung totoo ito, mag-materialize, uh, would you think this would be necessary? Well, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, returns and risks are closely correlated. You know, you, you get higher returns if you take higher risks. And there's no shortcut about it. I think that right now, uh, Philippine fund managers are capable, as we've seen with DBP and Land Bank. I was looking at their performance, and I think through the years, they've shown the capacity to manage the funds. By the way, if you look at the, the return on equity that they have been registering. Now, in terms of uh, investments, these are also some of the side comments that we've been hearing. Uh, well, well, we have not stated in the position, and I don't think... I suppose we should not take it as a BAP position, but maybe my opinion is you're asking. Uh, the, the investments that come with high return, there is, there, there is, of course, no assurance that the returns will always be there. You know, returns are computed based on historical performance. There is some mathematics involved, but in general, those things happen. But it's also true that it does not happen. So the, the amount of returns that we could get is commensurate to the kind of risk we're willing to take. I think even Philippine managers, if you give them the risk parameters that, uh, that, that you wouldn't give any other investors, there will be Filipino investment managers who could actually do the same thing. Mm. Salamat, sir. And I, I seem to recall, uh, Mr. Chair, that that point about high there are no high returns without high risks, if I remember correctly, was also made by Sen Gachalian in the very first hearing. So thank you for uh, elaborating on that, uh, Mr. Mongkupa. So lastly, Mr. Chair, uh, I, I was requesting if the chair could invite to the next hearing the AER, or Action for Economic Reforms. Because uh, they sought and they got the signatures of some of the country's leading economists, including five former NEDA secretaries, when they first publicized their opposition, but to the earliest version of the Maharlika Investment Fund. Eh, there have been many refinements from that first draft to the draft that has been presented to this committee. And I think it would be useful, Mr. Chair, to hear any reassessment that the AER might have formulated in light of the changes to the earliest draft of the Maharlika Bill submitted to Congress. So if um, if the Chair would allow, Mr. Chair, I would like to request I'd move to invite also the Action for Economic Reforms uh, to the next hearing. I so move, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you. We can invite them to the, the Action for Economic Reforms to the next. We're scheduling a technical working group meeting already, so we can invite them to that and they can submit a paper and they can bring up their uh, concerns. Um, Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Senator Gachal. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Chair, just to, uh, before we terminate the uh, hearing, um, I was looking at the sources of funds, no, and one of which is uh, will come from privatization, and I uh, would like to ask maybe the treasure, national treasurer or any any uh, 
UF rep who's in charge of privatization. Uh, first, first of all, what are the assets lined up for privatization? Uh, the timetable, what type of uh, uh, revenues or proceeds are we uh, expecting? Um, seems to me that privatization is the uh, preferred um, source of fund by uh, some of our resource persons from the private sector. Uh, and this is actually a model that we have seen in most sovereign wealth funds, uh, proceeds from oil and gas, proceeds from uh, resources, proceeds from privatization. Um, and uh, this seems to me the much, uh, I think, a, a lesser um, uh, issue uh, when it comes to source of funds. So do we have any um, information on the privatization? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Senator. Uh, we have uh, outlined uh, a number of uh, items for possible disposal or possible transfer to the balance sheet of the IMWF. With the permission of the Chair, we can submit to the uh, Secretariat uh, for uh, reference uh, guide uh, information of the Senators. Can you name the top three in terms of uh, size? Size. So, uh, uh, for example, uh, what are you looking at to privatize for the next three years? Of, because it depends on kung ano yung kwan ano yung, yung, yung timing. Uh, the the one here probably that could yield the highest in terms of current estimates would be on uh, the mining rights uh, for a particular company. Uh, that's about a hundred billion right now, uh, but. Probably the time frame that we are looking at is it could be three years uh, down the road. Huh? Uh, uh, the terminal, the food terminal, uh, is also a, a candidate. Uh, How much is that in food terminal? The, the oh, di ba na di, di pa na privatize yun? Meron pa hong Meron property, pa. Oh, so like, okay. uh, portion of the property. So how much are you looking at? Um, the the estimates could be around uh, at least twenty two billion. Uh, what else? What are the top three? Um, and then a uh, the thirty uh, Makati, the mile long. long. Uh, but again, uh, the, the oh, time horizon for this is about three years from now. Uh, of uh, close to eight billion, uh, around eight billion. 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 So with the hundred billion, twenty-two billion, eight billion, that's uh, how much that one hundred thirty billion. So you Roughly, don't uh, you uh, don't need land bank and DBP anymore. Uh, but this so, could come BSP. To... <laughs> no, uh, BSP, uh, yung suggestion niya kanina. Uh, uh, but so, the time horizon, ho, sir. Para uh, hindi na mo sila na ipitho kasi sila eh. Uh, so uh, ako na ako na ako na naghahanap po ng lusot ho nila. No? So 130 billion is more than enough. That's double the amount of uh, the initial capital. Uh, Mr. Chair, the, the target uh, horizon for uh, most of for two of those items that I mentioned uh, will be after three, three years on 2025. Yeah, but uh, my, my, my take on that is if, uh, if that will be a mandate, then uh, of course timing is important. I mean, privatization timing is is uh, a very important aspect, but timing is also relative. Eh? Uh, timing to whom? No? Um, but then again, uh, my, my take on that is um, privatization is the mode, then there will be a sense of, of urgency. No? The three-year horizon can be shortened, can be six months, can be one year. No? Right now, kasi, uh, to be honest about it, the privatization, I've heard this so many times already. Eh? No? And uh, every administration, there's a privatization, but once they're there, they forget about privatization. No? So, but if there's a compelling reason, for example, uh, it, will be, it will be pumped into uh, the Maharlika Investment Fund, then there's a compelling reason to uh, expedite the privatization. No? That's, my, that's my take on it. No? 
Yes. Uh, if I may just add, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, on the other hand, we should also look at it on, as you said, comparing reason, but we don't want also a fire sale because given that uh, we need the funds, then the, um, you know, the impression might be that we're selling it for a lower price. So we also have to be prudent and judicious in terms of using these assets. It could also be that we can just use these assets as our own, again, con equity contributions to the whatever undertaking that the Mahardika will be doing. So we need we still need the cash. Yeah, it can be can be equity uh, contribution, and then uh, I think borrowing is also an option. You know, so you can you can uh, you can uh, uh, peg on those uh, assets. But my my point of the matter there is, uh, I think uh, privatization. From what I hear from our source persons, uh, privatization seems to be the less controversial and the most logical because the assets being sold now can be enjoyed by future generations by investing in infrastructure and, and other things. So that seems to be, uh, from what I read uh, in, in literature, that seems to be a, uh, a preferred modality. You know? So uh, we're just putting that on the table for uh, the body to study. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, yes, just a recap. Yes, please. Um, I mean, what's the sense of urgency for the fund? Uh, actually, um, if I may, ma'am, we already missed the boat. We've already had other assets that we could have used to fund the Maharlika. So given also what we'd like to do in terms of accelerating our development, the very huge uh, infrastructure pipeline that we have, so all the more there's the compelling reason to set up the Maharlika. Uh, for, for example, uh, I saw the list of PPP. Parang mas madami yung listahan niya na back to sender than the actual... PPP projects that has been approved. Tama po ba? I mean, based on your submission. Come again, past, sorry. The past six years, ilan na, ilan na yung ginagawang PPP? Ah, uh, okay. Well, in the past six years, ma'am, uh, there was a slight decline on the uh, big ticket PPPs as the previous administration had a different... Uh, um, view of, of public-private partnerships. Um, but as that, uh, in the PPP Center's database, uh, we have around 200 plus awarded uh, PPP. Some of them have concluded already. So, in a way, yung pag-take out ng PPP was not because there was no Maharlika fund. It was because of a policy decision by uh, ano ba yan? Yung, kung sino yung nakaupo sa Malacanang. I mean, I think that that's that's where the point I was uh, expressing earlier, uh, which states that uh, this is actually an alternative source of financing, as is the PPP program uh, has uh, a set of sources of financing through equity and debt, normally banks, but as in other PPP markets worldwide, uh, opening up such uh, such a fund is actually an, another. Uh, source of, of finance. Uh, but, um, kumbaga, independent yung Maharlika Fund dun sa PPP na we, could, we probably missed the boat because it was not a policy taken by the previous government. Itong konsepto ng PPP. Hindi ba iba ganun? Yes, you, you said Edelon. Yes, sir. Because technically, how... In a way, kasalanan yung when we missed the boat. You were there. You were part of NEDA. You were, you were all part of the economic team, di ba? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Tsaka na yung missed the boat. Anyway. <laughs> I'll second that sentiment. Nasisisik ako. Anyway. <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, you asked earlier about the uh, the urgency no, of passing the bill. Um, uh, we at NEDA, no? So we have uh, uh, we have studied this also, no? Uh, and uh, um, ang isang nakita rin kasi namin is that um, uh, come 2025 at the latest, uh, we will already be an upper middle income country. Ngayon, uh, dahil sa pagbaba nung, ano, nung ating GDP nung 2021, 2020 and then, you know, hindi pa tayo masyadong nakaka-recover. Uh, 
Uh, it has actually gone down, but uh, we think even with the conservative na growth rate, uh, we will hit that uh, $4,000 eh, per capita GNI uh, ang, ano, by, by 2025. And when, when that happens, uh, hindi na tayo uh, eligible for the uh, preferential rates ng sa mga ODA natin. So many grant funds magko-close na yung mga window na yun kasi supposedly, do na tayo sa commercial lending. So we really need to um, uh, to, to really uh, look for other ways. Uh, and uh, currently, it's still um, you know it's still a low saving rate for for the Philippines. Matas pa rin yung fiscal. So, so, so siguro okay. you said, di ba parang we need to look for other ways aside from the Maharlika Fund. Ano pa yung other ways na pwede natin pasukin? FDI. Kasi it's really about financing the savings investment gap. Eh. Malaki pa rin yung investment requirement natin. So as you can see, uh, savings investment gap, not through debt. How are we doing that to encourage more FDIs? Uh, meron naman na tayong mga naipasa no? uh, na, na, you know, um, mga liberalization bills in, in the past. So that is, uh, that's, yeah, that's one way. Another thing though is uh, medyo chicken and egg to, eh, no? Kailangan may ayos natin, infrastructure natin, so that the foreign uh, investors would also come in. The, the RCEP is also a good way to, uh, to, to bring in investments. Kasi some of uh, the foreign manufacturers, for instance, I know of... Uh, yung mga luxury bag makers, nandun sila sa Bataan, for instance. No? Uh, and the reason why they are there is because we are enjoying a GSP Plus sa EU. Kasi nagmamarket sila do, dun sila nagsisell. Eh kung galing sa Pilipinas, uh, mababa yung tariff. Yun, yung ganun. So, maraming ganitong opportunities din with our entry into ano, and, our set. And you said, hindi na pag-aralan na... Bakit hindi na lang natin ayusin at buhayin yung NDC as part of the developmental uh, ano ba yan? Uh, program of the government? I think uh, they will require major substantial overhaul of the charter, no? as uh, mentioned nga by GM. Ang kanilang purpose talaga, their reason for being is really to be a pioneer in that particular sector. So talaga, as in wala pang, wala pang sure return, but they think that there is a strategic uh, industry, so papasok sila. Yeah, which in a way, it, it could answer yung absorptive capacity na nireklamo ng e ng land bank, di ba? Yeah. Kasi mm. sinasabi nyo na yung mga farmers natin, hindi, hindi nila kaya. So, maybe NDC can take that part. For example, di ba, ngayon, kaya ang mahal ng presyo ng sibuyas kasi wala pala tayong cold storage facility. Eh, baka si NDC can start a program na siya yung magiging consolidator ng mga cold storage facilities for our farmers. Pwede, pwede ka ba umutang sa land bank? Is that part of your charter? Uh, yes, we, we can do a, a lot. But uh, as regards to that, Mr. Chair, Madam Senator, um, yung aggregation of uh, land service, we, we can certainly do that. Uh, and we are hoping that the Maharlika Fund gets set up so we can get the funds from Maharlika. Hindi na nga kailangan ng Maharlika eh. I mean, technically, pwede ka nang dumiretso kay land, baka ikaw na yung pauutangin nila. Since nga yung mga maliliit na farmers, wala silang absorptive capacity. Can that be not done? Can I clarify? Maybe uh, this will help clarify. Because I think you mentioned earlier that the mandate is more on social welfare rather than uh, maximization of uh, your your yield. I mean, no, why your, yield is, your yields aren't as big as, yeah, let's say, uh, another. Because that's not your main mandate. Is that correct? That's what you no, mentioned. Just, no, just yeah. a clarification, Mr. Chair. Um, our mandate, our mandates are conflicting in that we are required to earn a profit, but at the same time, uh, engage in projects that are developmental in nature. Yes, but not profit maximization, not yield maximization. That's Actually, not your, it is part of our mandate. It's part of it. But yes. you were saying earlier that's, that that's why we want to uh, change our, uh, no, our okay. Charter, but yes. you invest in MSMEs, that sort of thing. But those are yes. by, by definition, those are higher risk uh, investments, right? So I mean, I'm just saying it would. 
seeing that just for the I mean, just what I'm seeing is the 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 national development company it's, it's designed a little more. It's geared more towards social welfare than it is towards yield maximization. We are seeing aligned, Mr. Chair, because the, the what when it's developmental, uh, like for example, uh, social entrepreneurship. Uh, or advocacy, the priority is not profits. The priority is development. And that's what the government needs uh, to do. Uh, so uh, by definition, NDC really engages in higher risk uh, projects. Which, which, diba, yun din yung sinabi niya sa amin the previous hearing, that you want for development, developmental programs. So hindi ba parang, ito na, nandito na si NDC? We also want a return kasi on the on the investments. Kaya kaya equity yung ano yung magiging uh, investments even for the PPP. Ang na envision actually is uh, equity investments uh, by the Mahardika. Wala ngang return sa kanila. Eh. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chair, Madam, uh, uh, if I may. So uh, I think before I. Before I I the stage because uh, Justice Roger wants to say something, but um, when when we do our portfolio management, we have to make sure uh, that we are clear on our objectives. So we are clear that the objective for a developmental effort is not necessarily uh, loss making. It can be profitable. However, there is the the consideration of scale and time. If if you have enough capital and it's long enough, very likely it will turn a profit, even if it's a big project. So uh, we just match our her, uh, investment horizon with whoever invests in us. If, for example, the investor will be an insurance company, then they have a longer time horizon because their liabilities are long term. So the way we see it is that the developmental objective, which could be profitable given the scale and time horizon, uh, should be matched with a commercial objective. We also have projects that will really make a profit. So in, in terms of just not, not commenting on Maharlika, but just our own uh, uh, currently uh, being uh, finalized for your management plan and risk management plan, we understand that this year, this is a development objective. We Our mix is 60-40, 60% development, 40% commercial. Since we are engaging in higher risk projects, we are likely out of, let's say, five companies, four might might fail, but the one will make up for that uh, failure. So that is that is where we are, and we think that it's significantly different from the way the Maharlika fund would operate versus an DC uh, fund would operate. Uh, In fact, um, tinitina ko yung mga projects yung for approval. Hindi na to SM, SMEs. This is large uh, investments na. For example, Vaccine manufacturing facility, hindi na to uh, maliliit na negosyante or a 6,600 hectare oil palm plantation. Hindi na to small scale. Uh, correct, ma'am. May um, Mr. Chair, Madam, Senator, may I clarify? Uh, regarding the Startup Venture Fund or SME, it is one of our projects. The other projects are not necessarily geared for towards startups, but we are looking for pioneering ventures. The vaccine manufacturing facility is going to be our first under the new uh, leadership, our first investment, uh, because we feel that in the event, which is likely that there's going to be another pandemic in the future, uh, the Philippines is better prepared with its own vaccine manufacturing facility in the country. So that requires, <laughs> and the decision was actually more on government restriction rather than what we can give. Uh, we want approval, not need NEDA approval. So it's 150 million. Kasi mas mababagal kami if we, kasi, kasi very strict yung NEDA. It will, it will, it will, um, well, by the way, I agree with the strictness, no? But, uh, but, but of course, it will extend the, the process. So, wait, so you don't go 
go through yung mga ICC. But we do. In excess of 150 million pesos. So, you know, that's one of the things na we wanted to change in our charter. Na baka naman, we, we can already, you know, in, in very urgent projects, pwede nang i, ano, ipasukin. But correct, the observation, okay, the observation is that merong project na walang gumagawa. Like for example, this vaccine manufacturing facility, 2014 pa sila nag-apply hanggang ngayon hindi na approved. Eh, di kung sana meron na tayo noon before the pandemic, we would have, ano. So, so it, it, it just went yeah, Which means, di ka pa pwede umutang sa DBP? No, may pera naman kami to fund it eh. It's the, it's the approval of the funding, yung demand sa Board of Investments, you know, all, all of these things, no, na ang tagal-tagal. So technically, it's the, it's the red tape that, ano, cost yes, missing the boat. Yes, ma'am. So it's, so, but, diba? but, but, but that is existing eh. So... And it will still be existing kahit may maharlika fund na tayo because... You, diba? yung the corporation would still be governed by the same uh, ma'am I don't want to uh, parang distract away from you know I, I don't want to do detract from the focus on the Maharlika fund but we have our own plan unshackle NDC to pursue its own plans and we really do not think that it's uh, competitive to the Maharlika plan I think it will work in synergy because Doon din kami kukuha ng funds. Diba nga, babalik pa rin tayo doon sa problema na money is a problem eh. Um, diba? I'm sure hihingi ka rin sa amin ng pera. No, ma'am. No. No. Mm -hmm. No. Hindi ka hihingi sa national. No, ma'am. Kasi nga, I, have, I came from the private sector. I have my own plan. And nakikita ko naman, ang kailangan ng gobyerno is more money. So why are we gonna, why am I gonna ask for more money from the government? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some of my physical assets, put it there in the fund, a security, a bit of the cash, and then do a roadshow sa lahat ng pinuntahan ng government natin na sobrang bango nating lahat. At I will ask them, oh, meron kaming fund. Can you, can you put in? That is my plan. But I mean, Separate from the Maharlika. Yeah, I'm informing nga kasi diba parang there's sense of urgency. Ang sa akin kasi, nandiyan ka na eh. ba? Meron ka ng personnel. Uh, kumbaga, uh, alam mo na yung mga mistakes. Itong Maharlika Fund or Maharlika Corporation, syempre may birth pains to at the beginning. Yung, yung National Development Company. Kumbaga, napagdaanan niya na yung birth pains na yun eh. Maharlika, there's a sense of urgency to fast track development, to fund projects. Ms. Mr. Chair, Madam Senator, as regards to the sense of urgency, we wholeheartedly agree that uh, that kailang kailangan na natin to dapat matagal na. Uh, but the, in terms of what you're saying, it's absolutely correct. We can help when the Maharlika Fund is already approved. We can help set it up. By offering NDC systems, processes, and people uh, so that it can hit the ground running, you know. Uh, so we think really that there is a synergy between the NDC and the Maharlika Fund. And another point, you, di ba yung LB, yung land bank ko ba nag-remit kayo na dividend sa national government? Uh, yes, yes. ma'am. Uh, so with the uh, 75 billion uh, na ibibigay niyo sa Maharlika, May effect to who ba to dun sa remittance nyo? Um, As it, part of your dividends? No, ma'am. So hindi mo mababawa, hindi mo mababawasan? We, no, we will still be, by law, uh, be giving dividends to the national But the, the amount, would it decrease? Kasi yung 75 billion, nilipat nyo sa Maharlika Fund, um, assuming at, at its present form, now, you're not gonna get anything. Would the dividends remittance mababawasan ho ba yan? Oh. Well, we cannot give that portion of the dividend that should be funded by the earnings of the 75 or 50 billion. So for example, uh, that 75 billion, let's say, in-invest nyo na may 4% na kikitain kayo, so yung 4% na yon, yun yung mawawala dun sa... Uh, remittance nyo dun sa national government. May more or less? 50% uh, of that. 50% of that. From of the, the 4%. Uh, yes. Same din ba with DBP? So technically, ang magiging scenario, 
Magkakaroon dec- decrease dun sa remittance sa national government kasi ganun din yung mangyayari sa court. Tama po ba? Madam Senator, yun po kasing pagkukuna na 50%, that is set aside immediately. So magkahiwalay ho yung punong pondo eh. Uh, yung 50% na pagkukuna ng Maharlika, if ever, ihihiwalay ka agad. And ito, hindi na ho ito nagagalala. Hindi nga, at the day, mababawasan yung binibigay nyo sa Treasury. Hindi po. Hindi, hindi mababawasan? Kasi nakahiwalay yung, nasa isang linya hindi. ng fund. Amount-wise, amount-wise. Kunyari, kunyari ngayon, binigay niya 50 kasi kasama pa yung dun sa gaming. With Maharlika fund, hindi na 50 pa rin yung i-remit nyo. Hindi po. Kasi ika-carve out yun na yung sa gaming, di ba? Direct. Dun, dun ho sa kabila kinukuha yun eh. Uh, yun nga po, tanggalin muna namin yung 5% franchise tax and then saka namin kukuna yung 50%. Now, it's the utilization of the 50% government share yung po yung aming offer dito. Right now, it's a higher, it can be utilized at a higher level. Samantala ngayon, medyo hindi pa. Kasi ang nakacharge lang doon ay yung... Uh, Mahar- uh, sorry, uh, Universal Health at saka yung Space Fund. So, maa-accommodate pa ho doon sa side na yun. Ng aming... yeah, pero that government share, doon kinukuha ng DBM Hindi po. yung ang national budget natin. Tama po ba, Treasurer? Technically, ito mga dividends na to, di ba? Yan yung pinupul... Um, Sinasabi po yata niya, sinet aside na po niya yung para sa government. So, doon na po nila kukunin. Yung pong sa Maharlika would be coming from another source ng, ng pag. So, yung kukunin niya for Maharlika, hindi kayo magka-carve out din sa 50% na nililimit niyo to government. E, doon nga daw. Doon nga daw yung kukunin. Um, so, pero, dadag, makas, ma'am, dadagdagan ng, ng ngayon niya yung 50% na dapat, ba, 100, gagawin po niya ngayon ng 100. Hindi, oh, it's just the same. It's the same. Because, yeah. well, it cannot be the same. Kasi may, mababa- may mababawas dun sa nire-remit nyo, dun sa national government. Tama. Di ba may, mababaw- uh, may mababawasan? Ang, ang nangyayari ho kasi previously, ang during during the hearing of uh, universal health care and the other funding requirements, na-underutilize yung 50% government share. So that's why we'll, we're, we're funneling all the funding to sa government share. Kasi ang nangyayari, nagiging, doon na ilalagay yung obligation sa net income at saka ho doon sa taas. So, simple lang naman ho yung scenario. Di ba nag-remit kayo sa national government? Let's yes. say, for example, uh, 50 yung nire-remit nyo the moment with the Maharlika Fund. Technically, hindi siya pwede maging 50 kasi may 10% from gaming, gross gaming, na mababawas doon sa dividend. And doon, nanirimit nyo. So, liliit yung pie. Sig- sig- siguro, Madam Sir, i-present na lang namin. Uh, Pero liliit, liliit. Namin. Pero liliit, huta- liliit, di ba? Kasi, uh, yung a portion of your your income would be set aside for Maharlika. Y- yun nga po, Madam Sir, eh. um, ang ano ko ho namin kasi doon is yung 50% government share is supposedly for a specific purpose. Hindi po yun for general fund. So kung doon kinukuha yun, hindi ho mababago yung, yung, uh, yung pumupunta sa national government. It's just a matter of utilization. So halimbawa, uh, nag, nagbigay kami ng 50 billion ngayon for the government share. But ang charge ngayon is just 50% of that government share with 25 million and 2 billion. Uh, t- t- sorry, 25 billion and 2 billion. So yun lang po ang nagagamit doon sa government share ngayon. Hindi, pero labas na kayo dun eh. Kasi na-remit nyo na sa treasury yung 50 oh. billion na yun, di ba? Yes, ma- yes, yes. So yung utilization na yun, labas na kayo. But ang inaano ko is yung, yung, yung ibibigay mo kay treasury de Leon, mababawasan ngayon because of Maharlika Fund. I-present na lang po namin ng kung paano namin inaano. Siguro we can ask them for just so we're, you know, we don't go back and forth. Uh, yeah, can we just... Mababawasan yung i-remit niya sa inyo, di ba? Treasure, can you just, ano, just uh, referee between this uh, exchange? Ma'am, ganito na lang. And maybe he's i-clarify. Bawa ho, i-remit niya saan talaga 50. Laging 50. Ang kaso lang po, ina-allocate, himbawa po sa universal health 10. 
Tapos yung pong si um, si Tupio, uh, two, two, ba, five, so 15. Sinasabi po niya, may natitira pa doon sa 15 na pwede niya ibigay kay Maharlika. Pero 50 pa rin ho yung nire-remit niya sa amin. So parang... Kasi wala pa hong allocation yung balance after the universal health care sa kanong ano ano isa pa. Yeah, pero yung balance nung 50, i-minus mo yung universal and whatever, ginagamit din yun ng national government yung to yun. budget, to fund the national budget. Fund po yun. Diba? It will be part of the general fund. So technically, may mababawasan sa, sa DBM na pwede nilang gamitin, na gag, pwede natin gas, na pwede namin i-allocate during the budget season kasi nga because of the Maharlika. Nabawasan. Fun, mababawasan. So, ang gagawin ng DBM ngayon, uutang to compensate for that X amount na mawawala because of the Maharlika fund. Diba? Parang... Uh, pwede rin naman po ma'am, yung pong Maharlika Fund will be funding iba po mga proyekto. Matatanggal rin po yung ibang mga expenditures from the national government. Kasi po, magpupunta na po sa Maharlika yung mga infrastructure. Yeah, pero so, kung ganun din lang, eh bakit hindi na lang natin dinaretso na sa DBM yung pondo? Uh, para si DPWH na or yung gagawa, yung, yung mga ahensya na, na, I mean, more or less na nababantayan namin, nakokontrol namin at may oversight. Unlike this fund na technically we're mm. giving it to a group of people mm. to manage the fund. Na, taba pag nalugi ba yung fund, pwede nating ikulong yung mga board? Meron naman pong penal, penal provisions. Sa pag nalugi? For example, pag... Meron po yung mga sanctions against the, ano po, sa fund. Ma'am, yung lang po siguro, pag binigyan nyo po sa fund, mas mapapa mas mapaparami nila kasi nga po gagamitin po nila they can already invest 2 billion but the private sector can also uh, participate so mas marami po mga proyekto ang pwedeng gawin with that fund na nawala lang ng kon na konting nawala sa national government hindi yun nga but going back so diba si DBP at si Land Bank pwede naman nilang ipautang na diretso dun sa ifa-fund yun na project ng Maharlik eh like NDC <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, may mga constraints yun nga po na bang uh, earlier, yung SBL, tapos rin po yung pong uh, mahihirapan rin po naman they go through the absorptive capacity ng mga corporations. So, so would you still recommend the fund kung aalisin namin yung sovereign guarantee? Sagot yung mga DOMG. Ah, yung, pong, yung pong guarantee lang po para dun sa contributions po ni Land Bank at ng DBP but you're not going to guarantee the liabilities, the obligations or any debt that would be issued by the by the corporation. So okay pa din sa inyo. Kunyari, hindi na namin bibigyan ng sovereign guarantee yung 75 tsaka yung 25. Ma'am, kami okay po. Pero baka sila po ang hindi okay. <laughs> Kasi isa yun dun sa... Because diba, at the end of the day, um, baka maging kampante yung kung sino man yung magmamanage ng fund. Na okay lang malugi to kasi may, may ano naman eh, may pang salo tayo, may pang bayad tayo because at the end of the day, tayo yung magmamayad nun if this fund fails. It's the moral hazard class. Yeah. That the... Uh... Diba? And at the, diba ang tanong is, it, at the end of the day, is it all worth it? Diba? Na ito na lang ba talaga yung way fund, um, yung, yung pag-develop ng bansa natin? Kasi parang ganun yung the way you're selling it to us, na parang kung wala tayong Maharlika fund, makokrotail yung growth ng bansa natin. Mr. Chair, Madam Senator, if I may, uh, regarding the sovereign guarantee, we have an existing sovereign guarantee for NDC. So, uh, uh, and have we used it? Yes, when we issued our Agri Agra bonds. Uh, so the the way we see uh, the way, the way I see. So, the, so my can you, I know. Ano yan? Nabayad sa inyo because of that sovereign sovereign fund. Net of costs, we earned over 2% net of costs. So, it was okay. Uh, we were not able to issue the entire 50 billion authorized to us, but uh, 
Uh, we issued a total of 5 Wait, billion. You need to say may mandata na kayo to issue a 50 we, billion? 200 billion. Basically, the 50 billion for Agri-Agra and 50 billion for Infra on two separate EOs. Uh, no, I mean, it's not it's not ready money. We still have to raise that money. Company. It's it, a, it, na yung mga ganyan. I, yes, yes. Maganyang kalaki. No, sir. No, ma'am. Uh, no, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's up to 5 billion lang uh, so far. But we are authorized. And it's it's just a matter of execution. Uh, the amount, uh, you know, the execution is the same whether the amount is smaller or big. You know, so, so that what I mean to say is uh, we, the, the Mahalika Fund can hit the ground running uh, with our help. That, uh, again, uh, and the uh, sovereign guarantee, it's not so much of an issue because we can use our sovereign guarantee. And NDC needs the sovereign guarantee because we have higher risk for our projects. Eh? So otherwise, we will not be, uh, we will not be uh, palatable to investors. And uh, as to the issue of leveling the playing field, ma'am, if I may just comment, I could not resist. Ma'am, medyo, ano na eh, uh, uh, hindi tayo level playing field ngayon. So, Ang ibig sabihin, if government issues a fund, dehado agad yan. Because the investors know, ang hirap-hirap kadil ang mga gobyerno. That's why you have to add sweeteners to it. And that's what I see the Maharlika Fund doing. You have you have to make it attractive. You cannot, if it's a private equity fund doing a, a race, it's easier for them to do. Kasi they're unrestricted. They're unencumbered by all these uh, and all these things. So, I think... Pero di ba yung restriction? Technically, that's the safety net. Uh, the, 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 restrict, the restriction kasi um, basically restricts the front from being agile in investing. And there are investment windows that you, you have to be fast in the execution. If the fund is encumbered by so many layers which normally is, you know, present in a government organization, then it's already dehado. So in order to compensate, you give it a guarantee, you know, you, you, you give it sweeteners, tax exemptions, uh, and so the investor will say, Oy, I'm, I, will, I will invest here. You can do that without the fund, without the Maharlika fund. Uh, Madam, Madam, I'm just emphasizing that NDC has a smaller scale than what is envisioned for Maharlika because Maharlika is intended to support the whole of government. NDC right now is looking at investment gaps. Yeah, but you know, because during the briefing, may there nag suggest. Now, why don't we just uh, no, um, fix NDC? Para pwede siyang uh, mag-level up at a uh, higher investment. Um, I agree. I think that uh, that uh, it is not a mutually exclusive proposition. I think fixing NDC uh, should be done, but it should not be mutually exclusive to the proposition of a Maharlika fund. Kasi we need all the help we can get to catch up with the investment opportunities that we have missed. And, sige po. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. It's the statutory legal counsel of all government corporations. I think I have to emphasize that the mandate of the National Development Company is almost completely different from the mandate that would be given to this Maharlika Sovereign Wealth Fund. The Maharlika Sovereign Wealth Fund is intended to make optimal uh, returns its investments, while the NDC is mandated to invest in strategic sectors, primarily to stimulate growth. The Maharlika Sovereign Wealth Fund, to be managed by the Maharlika Investment Corporation, is given a different uh, task, and which I emphasize is to obtain optimal results. So therefore, one uh, possible sources of funding, it was already mentioned, is the securitization of some government corporations. But securitization has so many legal niceties. It will take several years 
in order to securitize these uh, assets of government corporations. Because we might think that a corporation like PISAM, like CAAP, would own so many real estate and properties. But uh, there are so many, uh, so many legal niceties that uh, the OGCC would probably be entering into a different field because in the first place, we might even have to find titles for these uh, properties. We are also in the process of uh, coordinating with the Governance Commission so that we can possibly liquidate, dissolve, and even uh, probably uh, not, not necessarily the fire sale that was mentioned by our national treasurer, but uh, this process of uh, securitization, I wish to emphasize, involves a lot of legal niceties that cannot be done overnight or probably within the next six months. It is a matter of the sovereign wealth fund is intended to immediately put up a, a, a fund that will be able to take advantage of the present situation wherein nakababa po ng mga prices ng equities. So it is probably uh, timely to invest so that uh, when the when the world economy recovers, then uh, the Maharlika Sovereign Wealth Fund will be able to cash in and, uh, as I mentioned, to be able to optimize the returns on all its investments, especially in equities, bonds, and uh, other forms of investment. So that's what I really have to emphasize. And okay lang ho sa inyo na sa Section 30, hindi, hindi na sila... Mag-exented ho sila sa GOCC Governance Act. Tinanggal po yata po yun, uh, Madam Senator. Hindi pa ho. It's still part of the bill. Meron po. Ang hawa ko pong version of is uh, naging tahimik na po. Uh, <laughs> uh, hindi ho. ho eh. I'm a copy. Section 30. SBN 1670. Uh, Section 30. Exemptions from the GOCC Governance Act of 2011. Ah, kung po yun, uh, Madam Senator, sa Governance Commission yun. Magkaiba po yung Governance okay, Commission. Magkaiba po yung Governance Commission for uh, GOCC. Can we ask yung government, uh, GO, yung OGCC, kung okay sila dun sa Section 30? Uh, that is a matter po for comment ng GCG. Okay, meron bang, kanina ata may GCG? As far as the OGCC is concerned po, natanggal na po yung dating provision na exempted from contract review. So ngayon po natahimik na, so it, uh, since it, Maharlika Investment Corporation is going to be a government corporation, then it follows na its contracts will be subject to review by the OGCC. Pero hindi ba limiting din yon dun sa, uh, ano ba yan? Make it more attractive kasi uh, magdadagdag. Nandun pa rin kayo. I mean, uh, you, yung, yung, yung pag-check na yun can also cause delay dun sa pag-manage ng fund. Iba po yung management of funds dun po sa contract review. Ang concern lang naman po ng OGCC is the review of the contract. Hindi nga. So pag nakita niyo na defective yung contract, what will happen to that uh, investment? Yung contract po na i-review, kapag defective po yung contract, then we will not give due course to it. Yun nga. So, it will cause delay. Uh, iba, iba po yung investment do sa contract. Uh, kasi in the financial world, yung contracts lang po yung re-reviewin nga po ng uh, OGCC. Yeah, pero may kontrata pa rin po kayong i-review. And pag nakita nyo may defect dun sa contract, it can cause delay dun sa kung ano man yung um, project na gustong pasukan ng Maharlika Corporation. Madam Senator, uh, as I said, magkaiba po yung investment ng fund at doon po sa kontrata na papasukan. 
ng uh, government corporation na to. So, that's what I want to emphasize. Iba po yung investment policy, which also, we also want the legislature to set up the parameters. Siguro, proper opportunity po ito for us to reiterate what we stated in our position, that we have to follow the Santiago principles and also to satisfy the GAA uh, general accepted practices and procedures also to satisfy the sufficiency of standards test that was uh, they were all placed in our position paper so that while we fully support the objectives of the Maharlika Sovereign Wealth Fund the OGCC is lending or offering its services to refine the bill to comply with the Santiago principles with the sufficiency standards that's why we have reiterated in our position paper that uh, a technical working group be immediately convened and uh, the OGCC has offered its services to uh, make its input so that it can satisfy any scrutiny further by the Supreme Court once it passes the legislature. We must remember that uh, this bill which, might be, uh, which um, will become law, will still have to face challenges before the Supreme Court, and that is where the OGCC has offered its services. Thank you, Madam Senator. Mr. Chairman, last, last question na lang, kasi 2.30 na pala. Um, Treasurer De Leon, saan yung section yung uh, liability pag kunwari nalugi yung fund? Article, ma'am, Article 11 po, Section 47. Example, di ba kasi projection nyo, let's say 4%, pero hindi na-achieve yung 4%. Siguro site na lang natin yung nangyari sa Norway na bumagsak yung fund, di ba? A big loss. A big, nalugi lang. O, nalugi lang. Pag naluging ganon... Ma, paper loss lang po yun, ha? A paper loss. Hindi, kunwari, assuming na yung fund, na hindi lang paper loss yung mangyayari, walang liability yung investment manager dun sa pagkawala, dun sa pagkalugi, di ba? Ma'am, siguro, uh, depending on the circumstances, because like, uh, we, we cannot naman predict market conditions in the future. So... Pero uh, meron po sigurong ganong caveats, then there can also be some sanctions that then can be provided for the investment manager. Pero siguro rin po, there should also be justifications. Halika ko na lang, um, yung ano na lang, so yung land bank and DDP, okay lang po sa inyo na mawala yung sovereign guarantee dun sa contribution nyo. Uh, without the sovereign guarantee po, uh, the the risk weight of that asset, that investment will be 100% and it will impact on our capital adequacy ratio. Uh, and that is why in the proposed bill, we are proposing that the banks be given regulatory relief um, by way of uh, not including that investment in the a uh, formula for computing our capital adequacy ratio, uh, Madam Senator. Siguro, can you just provide the committee yung uh, projection nyo pag inalis namin yung sovereign guarantee? Uh, uh, clearly, we submitted something uh, uh, to compare po our capital adequacy ratio with uh, the guarantee and without the guarantee. But we will submit again to your office through the office of the chair. And yung DB who back can you also submit the same thank you thank you mr chairman hindi ba madam uh, mr chair sorry uh hindi ba dangerous to uh, ask for regulatory re relief in in the if 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 uh, the guarantee will be removed the regulatory the regulation is precisely to protect the depositors correct if you if you 
are asking for a regulatory relief, meaning I would assume hindi na siya 100% cover or something else, isn't it to the detriment to, of the depositors? Through the chairman, uh, Senator Gachalyat, the it makes the investment riskier. Correct. Than, uh, riskier for who? Uh, well, for the stakeholders of the bank. Uh, Which is the depositors. Oh, yeah, correct? including the depositors. Uh -huh. So if we are going to exempt you, in, in, in fact, it will be risky for those who put their money there. No, uh, The 200% cover is precisely to protect them. So in any eventuality, for example, nalugi lahat tong 50 billion, may 100% cover pa rin. Correct? If you remove that, assuming, I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it, the relief is to remove that so that you don't have to pump money, more money. Then if ever something goes wrong here, it's the depositors who will absorb that. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily, uh, Your Honor, because uh, as I mentioned, the 50 billion uh, is... Uh, it's just about 3% of Correct. our investment. And it's very much within our paid-up capital. So if push comes to shove, we can allocate that loss. I hope it won't happen. Uh, we charge it versus our capital. Your capital. But, but then again, the capital will be eaten up. Uh, well, it will be reduced. Oh, it will be cost. reduced. Yes. Okay. And reducing capital is something we don't want because capital is your shock absorber. That, that's correct, correct? sir. Uh, Senator, it will, if our capital is reduced and therefore we will have lower capital adequacy ratio if we're not given the, the relief, we actually will be prohibited from doing uh, a lot of yes, things, correct. including risky uh, loans. Yes, correct, correct. Thing. That's what, that's the point. The, the bottom line there is uh, uh, it's either you mitigate the risk by putting more money or you, the, the depositors, Indirectly will absorb the risk because they are the ones who deposited the money there, correct? That would be the last resort. Oh, because... Yes, of course, that will be the last resort. But I'm thinking of the extreme eh? you know, because we have to think of the extreme. And the same, the same goes with DBP, you know, the same philosophy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you very much for the very uh, uh, vigorous debate, uh, vigorous uh, session. I think we a lot of good things came came up uh, a lot of insights. So thank you to all the resource persons for your valuable insight on this proposed legislation. Uh, there are still many details that have to be threshed out of the bill, and today we've made a lot of uh, ways. So I propose that we refer the bill to a technical working group so that we can harmonize the various concerns that have been brought up during the hearings. Such, we'll be having a technical working group meeting for this measure on Wednesday, March 1, 10 a.m. online via Cisco WebEx. Senate staff will be at the Senator Tanyada room. For our resource persons, please consider this announcement as our official invitation to the said TWG meeting. Any materials or comments should be sent to the committee secretariat. With the pleasure of my colleagues, I would like to adjourn this hearing. With the, so this, hereby, this meeting is hereby adjourned. Maraming salamat po.